Hello and welcome along. We are on round three of the Rectivit series. It's the Vast Land Cross. Today we are in St. Nicholas, the start of a very, very busy time in the world of cyclocross. And while the Rectivit series carries no general classification, it really has some top class historic races. Before we get into today's action, let's remind ourselves of the Rectivit race in Neil. Talk us through that first win of the season in, in Neil, because it's such a historic race, isn't it? And it was a, an incredible way to start your cross season, but also um, your 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 new start with your new team. Um, yeah, the new start was super nice. Uh, I mean, new environment is uh, giving always a lot of energy, or at least for me. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's really nice to have a lot of knownness around you in cyclocross and uh, i knew i should start on a little smaller race and that the european nationals had been before so not everybody will be there but that's also a nice way to start and to get into it again and get the feeling and um, of course it's really nice if you get a win straight away and that you uh yeah uh see that you're on the good way already so early in the season Lots more to come from that interview with Lucinda Brand, who, uh, got to say, she didn't ma manage to make it home. She uh, took the interview in her car, which was uh, really kind of her. But we, we had a really good uh, catch up and uh, we'll bring you more from our chat with Lucinda Brand in uh, upcoming programmes. So don't panic. Jeremy Powers is uh, with me today. Day. And Jeremy, we, before we get into today's action, we're going to have a quick look back at the the U.S. National Championships uh, last week because there was there was some historic changes there. Yes, there were. Yeah, we have uh, two new winners of the national championship here in the United States. Uh, Stephen Hyde was the former men's champion, taken over by Gage Hecht. And on the women's side, of course, it's Katie Compton, uh, the 15-time national champion who was taken down by Clara Hansinger. Very, very cool to be out to, to be able to be out there and to see that uh, that moment in American cyclocross history. Uh, two big champions kind of passing the jersey on to the new up and coming young generation. And if you didn't get a chance to see the U.S. National Championships, let's remind ourselves of uh, the action. The new national champion, an upset 15 years in the making as Clara Hansinger dethrones the great champion Katie Compton. And we have a new elite women's national champion. Welcome Clara Hansinger to the Stars and Stripes Club. An emotional day an emotional ride and an emotional finish for Katie Compton as she waves to the crowd with tears flowing after her 15-year national championship run was broken today by Clara Hudson. Jeremy, I think you can, we can all, we were all having a, a bit of an emotional moment when Katie Compton uh, crossed the line there. It's you, you try to sum up that dominance and you've been there many times. You've been American national champion and you've been around there a lot when Katie's been at the top of, for, you know, for, for a decade and a half. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Clara Huntinger was so gracious in her post-race interviews as well. 
Yeah, I mean, everybody respects Katie. Everybody's got a, you know, a very soft spot for her. She's been the national champion for such a long time that how can you, you know, how can you not have a lot of respect for this rider? She's just, um, she's been able to do so much for American Cyclocross. She's been able to be at the top of the international scene and the national scene consistently. She's been like an incredible advocate and friend to so many riders. She's really paved the way in a lot of ways. And she's been there for just about everything. Can't, uh, you know, I'm super, super proud to be able to call her a friend, but uh, also to see her bow out so so, so well she had a lot of great things and she was very gracious in her post-race interviews about being able to pass that jersey on to clara hansinger and the truth is that no one owns the jersey forever marty you know you use it you you lease it essentially and then you have to give it and you have to pass it on we'll have a chat about the men's race as well but before we get into that let's have a look at some of the action Oh, I'm being told we're, we'll line that one uh, up in a minute. But uh, for Katie Compton, I've got to say from my perspective as well, Jeremy, and I've been, I've been commentating uh, cyclocross for, for quite a long time now. And, and Katie has always been one of my favourite riders. And I, I've commentated many, many victories of hers over the years uh, around the world. It's going to be quite strange seeing her out there, not in that, in that Stars and Stripes jersey. But we know we've seen the way she's riding already. We saw her there in that. That coverage of Neil, uh, she can she can bounce back from this one and and still uh, finish as she goes through the last years of her career. Yeah, she can still finish on a big high, can't she? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think truthfully, it had it been a different track, she quite quite possibly could have gone to sixteen national championships in a row. I I don't actually think that, I, you know, Katie can can continue can she can retire she has nothing left to prove to anyone but if she decided that she wanted to do another year there is a very strong possibility that she could be national champion again you know next year the national championships i believe are in chicago that traditionally would be a flatter type track there's not as many big hills there so this was more of a this was a more challenging course with a lot of like a lower and an upper deck um with a lot of running you know significant amount of running and the younger riders just had a little bit of an edge over her but she still rode such a strong race and as we've seen from her this year in Rudder Vorta and in some of the other races that she's been able to do well in, you know, she's still a force to be reckoned with. I expect that we'll see during Christmas period, you know, coming up that she's on the podium or she's doing very well or the top, the top American. So there's a, um, there's, there's no question that she still has it, that she's able to compete at the front and race, um, you know, in race with the top riders. So the, this, the, the book, the chapter with Katie Compton is still not over, Marty. <laughs> Right, so before we get to today, let's have a look at that U.S. Men's National Championship action now. So, yeah, so that was, this is, we're looking at Gage Hecht and Kerry Werner, which were two of the pre-race favorites that we chatted with in the podcast, Marty. Um, talked a lot about them. And this is the kind of infamous, uh, you know, crash that happened where Gage Hecht, uh, unfortunately, a little hot. There's a compression at the bottom of that very steep third technical section there hit the tape and then Kerry Warner uh, unfortunately kind of got clotheslined there a little bit. I, it, it, a lot of people talking about that as a, uh, as a bit of drama, but the truth is, is that Hex rode a fantastic race overall. Uh, Kerry, you know, that knocked the wind out of his sails. Um, but Kerry also took the Pan American Champions jersey already this year. Uh, Heck raced the under-23 race there. He's only 21. So they didn't go head-to-head -head in that race. Heck came in here, though, and rode an absolutely flawless race, and I don't think anybody would have taken – you know, it would have said, oh, Gage wasn't the deserving winner there. You're seeing Curtis White and Stephen Hyde ended up coming in behind there, second and third. And, uh, yeah, Hector wrote, a, Hector wrote a fantastic race for the Donnelly team and is just elated here, as you can see, to be able to take that victory. Yeah, he's definitely got a big future. I remember commentating on uh, last year's Colorado Classic where he uh, managed to hold off the field to take uh, an absolutely phenomenal victory on the road there. He's, you know, he's a, he's a real uh, emerging talent, isn't he? Definitely is. Yeah, he's got a huge engine. He'll be a very um, he'll be a very gracious winner as well, and he'll be a great uh, great person to hold the jersey and uh, represent it in Europe and, and across, around the world. OK, let's get into St. Nicholas today. Uh, we've got a little uh, course preview. Uh, Jeremy's good friend, Ann Hours, um, Erwin Viveka, out on the course. And this is what we can expect today. So this is the course, Jeremy. It's, it's one that you've ridden many times. They've put a few changes in this year. OK, yeah, I uh, haven't, uh, haven't seen the exact changes yet, but we will. And I, uh, I know this course because it you know, was one of the races that I always did from 2004 
which was my first year, or 2003, in fact, my first year over there. I think I did this 2004, 5, 6. I did it pretty much every year when I first got there. Um, always did uh, St. Nicholas. The promoter was super friendly towards me and uh, always was able to help me out in getting over there and making sure that I was well taken care of. So I have a, a great history and a good memory of this track. It goes around a lake for anyone that doesn't uh, know the track. It goes around a lake, as you can see there. It's on the right-hand side of our screen now. Oftentimes, it gets very close to the um, it gets very close to the lake, and, and riders can sometimes slide down underneath the uh, underneath that that snow fencing that they've put up there and slide into the lake. This is not one of those sections, but um, it is definitely uh, very sandy. It's very fast traditionally, um, and it has a lot of little steep off cambers. Um, yeah, there's some barriers in there, but overall, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pedaling, and most importantly, this is kind of the first race of this big late December Christmas period block that we're about to hop into. Because we go through those, we send into that sand, and as soon as we've got live pictures from the start line, we'll we'll go down uh, to that. Last year, it was a real battle battle between the cousins. Uh, Sonicant and and Low Sales went sort of toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe in uh, this one. Today, in terms of this weekend, we've got the Namibia World Cup tomorrow. So quite a lot of riders have chosen to, to sit out this race. Today, we've been waiting for Sonicant to get that first victory of the season. It, it could come today. It could. In fact, she's got. Um, she does have some competition. There's no question. But there is. Uh, this is a good course for her. She's done well here in the past, and she's got an opportunity to take her first one of the season. I think she's. Um, she would. That, she would benefit from that, in my opinion. I think that anytime you win, whether all the riders are there or not, just brings in like a lot of emotion. It brings in a lot of energy, and I think it would be. I think this is a good course for her. So yeah, fingers crossed that she's able to have at least a good day, if not take the win. Let's have a look at the start list. This is who we can uh, watch today. So, Sonic Count and Lois Sells. Annick Van Elfen as well. Jeremy, she's had a phenomenal start to the season. Lara Vadon Scott's had some, has some victories already uh, this season for Power Sales and Bingo. For me today, Kata, uh, Blanca Catavas from Dolcini uh, Van Eyck. The, looking at the way she's been riding so far this season, she could be the outside bet today to take a victory. I completely agree with you. Yeah, she's got a. Uh, she's shown in the last couple of uh, weeks and and months that she's been able to ride very strongly. She's got a. Um, she's got a good. Seems like from what I can tell on her social media, she does well with this travel. She's been kind of in and out of the racing scene for the last uh, the last couple of weeks in Belgium, and she's been really tearing it up. I've been uh, I've been following along as I can. Started. I remember seeing that jersey the first time and thinking, who is that rider? Because you just one that you hadn't seen that often. And then I, I obviously educated myself a lot more. Very cool to see her having success. It's nice to have another nationality in there with another beautiful jersey in the uh, international cross scene. We're about to go live. Don't forget to subscribe to GCN Racing. We really appreciate all your subscriptions. Make sure you give us a thumbs up on our live broadcast. Hit that bell icon so that you're notified whenever we upload a new video or are about to go live. You can set your notifications for the busy festive period because there is a lot of racing coming up over the next week or so that you are not going to want to miss if you're indulging too much in your festive food you can just kick back grab a belgian beer and some fruits and watch um, GC Rosa's live cycle across we are down live on the start line now and you can see there's uh, quite a few riders here they've got front row start positions Fionn James there number 37 the British rider from Hope Factory Racing great to see Fionn James who's been performing very well domestically in the UK she has got a front row start position. Those low sales and some account. You can see Kata Blanca Vas in the uh, Hungarian National Champions jersey. The uh, green, white and red. We are almost ready. We are almost off and uh, racing here. We'll give you a full rundown of uh, who is here today. Karen Behe in the centre there, former Belgian champion. You can see he's got a good uh, start position. That one with Don Scott, number four, right alongside uh, low sales. Fionn James has got to try and capitalize now on this uh, front row start position and we are off and uh, racing away we go and Fionn James on the left from Hope Factory Racing has got a good start riders down already on the start uh, straight out of the blocks here Natalie Vashkelden has gone down uh, Nelly DeVos so that's a shame Paulina Roy as you can see from CCC Live using that road power just to move up on the outside 
that's a shame straight off the start line. Now Rabadon's got kicking it off the line. Let's just have a look at the riders. They're just going a little coming together there as uh, they've gone uh, down. That was uh, Sarah Beekmans as well. Who has also gone down with uh, number 39, Femba Van Empel, and a Dutch rider. And so just straight in, there's uh, Blanca Katavas, Sanika, Annick Van Alphen, uh, where Laura Vadon Scott so leading out here for the uh, Hens uh, Mass team. Just uh, getting into that position. This is this uh, this drop here as Blankovas just kicks it through to the front on uh, that section. Jeremy, it's quite a drop down around the, that section there, isn't it? The way you drop down around the bottom and, and back up again. Exactly. Yeah, these were these steep kind of off cambers where it's uh, it's very close to the VIP. It's very close to the start line. The, the the fans typically come over. You can see them kind of standing, lining the track there. It is really really steep, and so there's not a lot of um, there's even in the pro men's side. There's not a lot of riders that are going to be riding these sections. They're just they have a lot of holes in them, so it's really bumpy in the lead up to it, and it's uh, it's super hard to be able to get off the bike because it's at an awkward angle. As you can see here, Blanca Katavas having trouble with it. Um, but yeah, these are the those steep little uphill sections. This is the forest section, got some leaves kind of covering everything. The uh, traditional, you know, European December ground, very slick on the top. Um, still got a lot of moisture in it, as we see now. The uh, world champion, Sanakan, coming to the front. But Blanca Katavas, as we talked about, Marty, looking to, to seize this opportunity here today and potentially put herself uh, in the winning position or on the podium. It's a, it's a great opportunity for a rider to be able to come out, kind of get opened up especially with the World Cup tomorrow, you know, they're going to be, they're going to definitely be counting, um, counting the uh, money that they spend here today. But like anything, I think that they may have an opportunity to, to put down and go all in on this if there's an opportunity to, uh, to seize the day. So leading out, it's Sanakant, Blanca Katavas, Masha Mulder, Annie Van Affen, Laro Vidonskot, Karen Verheesrat, and Low Sells. That's the makeup now of this front group. And it's quite interesting when you look back last year, the top 10, Sanakant, Low Sells, Katie Compton, Yara Kasteline, Hirta Hooker, Annie Van Affen, Susanna Maestro, Pauline Del Hay, Masha Mulder, Mary Lease Motors. That was the top 10 uh, when we came here last year. Some account, as we've said uh, on our intro, uh, looking to uh, get that uh, elusive first win of the season down alongside uh, onto that bank with the water on their right shoulder. It's uh, Blanca Katavas, the Hungarian uh, national champion. She had a great start in uh, Zonhoven as well, really kicking on here behind the power of Sanakant looks like the world champion definitely wants to capitalize on this already yeah and this is one of those sections that I was talking about Marty where they're really down they're close really close to the water and one small hiccup <laughs> and uh, and you can take a dip as you can see these kind of undulating little ups and downs as they wind through this uh, this lakeside area of the track and now they're gonna head over towards the sandy area of this where they'll get into some big ruts and um, there will be a whole nother set of fans around this side of the course. There's Anik Van Alphen wearing number 11, getting up here. Van Alphen, remember the uh, rider they always focus on, bunny hops the barriers, does it with uh, great style. Vila Hussens uh, is here alongside Elodie Kuiper. Elodie Kuiper just right in there. There's Joyce van der Beek in the former uh, national champion. Kim van der Steena right behind her for Tartaletto Easter Egg. So leading out here on the opening lap, it's the Rectivit Series round three, the Vaslan Cross from St. Nicholas, if you're uh, just getting on board with our coverage today into the planks. Does Van Alphen manage to bunny hop them? Yep, she does. Just uh, moves over to the left very slightly. We saw in other races so far this season uh, when Anix had, had some good starts, the, the fact that she is really at the top end at the moment, the only rider that's bunny hopping these barriers. As this race goes on, that's really going to help her. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's an opportunity there, right, to be able to string that section together and then to be able to use it as a, a, a point to attack or to put the other riders under pressure and then string together another one on one of these off cambers like this. There's a lot of opportunities to use the whole course here and I think uh, being able to bunny hop is definitely going to be a feather in her cap later on in the race. 
Paddy Van Alphen just drops down to the bottom of that section. So Laura Vodonska just comes through. So you make up of this, uh, this quarter at the front. Sarnikant is still pressing on just behind them. Uh, the, uh, the riders from uh, Eco Freeland. Over Heistraten. Those sails over the top of this uh, section. And Anik Van Alphen again making light work of that. This skill is really going to pay dividends for her. Mashem order from the, the Group Hens Mass uh, Containers team. That uh, team, of course, is going to be reinforced uh, by the arrival of uh, Tom Nielsen January the 1st, down alongside uh, the lake here. And, uh, it must get a bit chilly sometimes along the uh, the sides of these, uh, these lakes at this time of year. Yeah, it's a little bit of a roulette, right? Like you're down there on that uh, on that lower part of the track, but it's the most uh, solid area of it. So you know the riders are able to conserve some energy, but they have to get a little bit wet. But Belgium and the, and the Netherlands Benelux area has been experiencing some fantastic weather lately. Some of the riders I saw that are in Belgium. Um, yes, got a little bit of a crash there from Verdun shot, just uh, a miss there on, on hitting that line perfectly. But some of the riders, Marty, have been riding in shorts as they come through here and hop back up onto where they start finish straight is. Verdun shot not, um, not too banged up from that, able to hop back on and minimize that crash. This is the, one of the big changes as Sana Kant just brings everyone to halt. You, st you saw Laura Vodonskot has to uh, throw on the anchors, go straight over the top as everyone came to a halt. That's the unpredictability as well. Just, I think, just bumped the back wheel there. Goes over the top but recovers quickly. This is one of the real changes here, Jeremy, as we go now through the line at the end of the opening lap. And uh, the lap time there for that group. They have, uh, stopped the clock. It was just over uh, seven minutes. About 7.06. That's one of the real changes. Onto the sand and then straight up onto that finish uh, straight. So, yeah, that could be that could be decisive as this race goes on. Yeah, there was back in the day, I remember there's been different variations of that, but the sand there, as you get away from the water, tends to be much, much um, thinner, and so there's not as much moisture in it, and the riders have to have a, you know, have a really hard time being able to cut that line and then get, make it all the way through there. Sana Khan, using her experience and being able to lead there, was able to take her line and make it through slowly, but it slowed down all the other riders. And so what we're seeing now, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about in these off-camber sections. They've got this rider wrapped up in some, uh, in some, some stuff to be able to stay warm. Um, not sure if it's cold there, if she's not able to move, so they're just keeping her warm. But um, these off cameras are slick and they're they're very, very steep. So when the riders go down, it's not a, it's not a soft landing, unfortunately. It's Yimsi Peters that's uh, gone down there, so we hope uh, she's all right. You can see that the emergency uh, services are with them. You can just see uh, Kat, the uh, Kim van der Steener just trying to get back on, but it's Annick van Alphen that's leading out. And we'll see how this lap she again senses that opportunity, those breakthrough elite victories for the likes of Annick van Alphen and uh, Blanca Katavas. As Lowe's sells, just gets on. Lowe's is as another rider, Jeremy, that's been suffering with a few health problems. As we said, the cousins, her and the Sana Kant that's uh, in this group, uh, they've uh, they've not quite had the, the seasons uh, that they've had previously. Yinsi Peters here is uh, definitely in some uh, pain. The emergency uh, guys are with her. Yeah, never like to see that when a rider's not able to get up. That could potentially be a broken bone for uh, Yancy Peters. It's not a uh, not a good look there when she's on the ground and not able to get up. So they'll be trying to get her um, stable and get her on there so that they don't have to hold the race up. Of course, the uh, an injured rider is going to come first in in all circumstances. But um, hopefully they're able to get her off and then get her you know to some some. Uh, hospital for some good care because yeah, you don't want to see you don't want to see that especially this time of the year so hopefully it's just a uh, a bad contusion nothing uh, nothing too serious just a little gap now from the back of uh, low sales to her teammate uh, kind of a start and three riders in here for eco Creelan sana camp the other rider in that team Laura of the Donch got the rider that just went over the top in the, the sand for power sales and bingo trying to find her way back into this group it's uh, sana camp using the power on those sections and then the the technical sections where the the skill of uh, Annick van Alphen who we've seen just grow in 
stature over the last uh, couple of seasons when the cameras just started to go back and just focus on her as she was bunny hopping those planks and now uh, that skill is going to start paying dividends she just uh, is growing as a rider year on year let's just run you through uh, some more of your riders now that the the race is uh, just settling in we'll just uh, give a little shout out to some of the other riders we've just seen marie lynn from team jaden well type viva lavello from county durham in great britain we've just seen her go down the other side that light blue white and pink kit of the fantastic jaden well type team do a great job in the uk to jaden well type viva lavello uh, they uh, develop such a lot of young talent and uh, do a great job the some of the other riders uh, in there uh, emily werner is in there from the usa uh, siobhan kelly from black dog racing from canada she is in there as well we've got michelle gagan uh, who's wearing 29 she's from illy bikes in ireland so she is in there as well. Some of your other nations that you can also watch out for, just picking out as we go into the planks section again. So Rebecca Gross is on the start line. We've got uh, Amelina Guzel from Russia. We've got Camille Devine from France. She's wearing 62. Marie Liss Motus from Estonia. She is wearing uh, 61. And then for our Italian fans, you've got Letizia Borghese from a Roma Italia Basso Bikes and uh, if you watch uh, if you were with us on GCN Racing for the Giro Rosa you'll remember the Aroma Italia kit have the best rainbow socks to uh, the uh, Aroma Italia uh, team and then Giada Borghese from Lapia Trentino is also there as well so those are some of your other uh, riders from different uh, countries lots of Belgian and Dutch riders in here Asana Cat with uh, Blanca Katavas uh, looking very comfortable here Jeremy in second place she does yeah absolutely and Van Alphen's also looking very comfortable I this is this is I have to say what I expected I expected that Sana Kant was gonna look for a victory today um, as they go over that little bit of an embankment there with um, with a bit of carpet over it to protect the riders tires and wheels um, you know just these this kind of this punchy course very fast track uh, Sana Kant looking you know looking very fit right now looking like that training camp that she did um, not long ago down in Spain has settled into her legs she looks very snappy she likes to race day you know back to back days she's got that she's got that depth and longevity in this sport as a rider she she can um, she can do this uh, or someone that's younger like Blanca Cadavas and any Van Alphen are going to unfortunately suffer from from her lack their lack of experience against the world champion so the world champ knows here now she's got that line nailed on the second time through she's able to come in she hits half of it but you see Cadavas they're losing some time not as clean um, and yes yeah, she I think Sonicon has a good shot to put together a fantastic day as we see the uh, unfortunately that rider with the uh, with the injury coming off the track I mean that you saw Sana can't take that chat tactic run that section and we're going through at the end of this lap now two leaders that little stop you saw that little minute mistake by uh, Blanca Katavas has given the advantage now to these two riders they go through just over the uh, 13 and a half minute mark so into uh, lap three here they haven't uh, given us how many laps to go just as of yet could be about six laps or so looking at the speed but Don Scott the Heistrat and then cells go through next then uh, the Don Scott and then we've got a bit of a gap back to that next group and all the orange of uh, Paulina Roy Acres it's uh, Van Alphen here has uh, signed the big contract for next year so it's all Roy Akers and Van der Steiner that go through those are the next two riders onto this big drop here this big sweep around the uh, the bottom of that section then you have to uh, get off and run remount at the top as uh, Blanca Katavas tries to uh, get back to those riders and this for, for a young rider she's only 18 Jeremy that experience when you saw there of Sana Khan on that sand section just choose read it perfectly from the previous lap just got off and run it and that was what gave them that little advantage yeah I mean the experienced rider like that maybe even on the first lap knew exactly what she was doing you know create a little bit of a uh, create a little bit of a uh, 
you know, rat's nest there for the riders that were behind, and then um, and then kind of punch it out of it, get it back up onto the start finish straight. It is um, it's challenging to be the first into that section. So you know, being able to kind of get a yo-yo effect, that's an attack, even though you're not trying one. But we see Van Alphen here really sticking out of the world champ. Um, definitely a good course for her as well. And unfortunately, we're getting those images of this rider who seems to probably have something a little bit more serious than um, than just a contusion. So, but it's at the front. Sonicant really trying to do some damage today, going a hundred. 100% into this so far. It looks like she's definitely giving it her all. That'll be good for her for tomorrow as she lines up as you know world champion for the Namur World Cup round. Um, but definitely looking to make her mark here today and open up her season with a uh, with a victory for the first time. When you look at the the way we saw that the U.S. Nationals uh, with Katie Compton and Sana Kant here, who's been at the top of her game for such a long time, then you see the likes here of. 18 years old, uh, Blanca Katavas, Annick Van Alphen, young rider as well. You see that the right likes of Sana Khan, low sales, those sort of riders, they're going to have to just evolve their skill set and evolve as the, because they've still got many, many years to go as professional riders. Such things as getting into bunny hopping those, those planks and, and, and carrying that speed through sections where once, the, once Annick Van Alphen starts picking up those victories, that confidence is going to start to grow, that endurance, that power. Do you feel that Sana Kant is going to have to evolve now as a rider? Truthfully, Marty, if uh, if Sana Kant's having fun and her body and, and, and everything is really still enjoying everything that she's doing, age is, is such a small part of what kind of goes into it. I think, um, you know, for me personally, it was, it was, I, I felt like I had had a long career. I started when I was 13, 14. You know, I raced for a very long time. I retired when I was 36. You know, that's a that's a long run in the game. And I think that for someone like Sana Khan, she's been doing this. She has been in it as long as I was. I know her name from the day that I started. I mean, she's really been racing for a very long time. So, you know, young riders, someone like Peter Sagan, right? He's been saying openly, like, hey, I might not go until I'm 40, like some of these other guys, even though I probably could. You know, you have it. Every, every rider has a, uh, has a lifespan in, in, in racing and um, and there's something to do after I think Sana Khan has is absolutely your quintessential Belgian cyclocross pro she knows everything she'll continue to stay in the sport whether she races five more years or one more year I have no idea but as long as she's having fun the results will come you know it's all about it's 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 not this isn't a two three month long season she's been doing this for you know many uh, decades actually and uh yeah it's just uh it's just a matter of having to kind of touch up the skills and figure out exactly how you reinvent and get excited about what's up and coming as we see them now coming into the barriers Kant is off but the young generation Anique Van Alphen and right behind her is uh, Blanca Cadabas getting into those barricades then for Donchkot, gradually just closing that gap down, having uh, Blanca Katavas just in front of us, helping her, helping her just come back. Karen Verheijstraten and Lowe Sells. See those uh, Belgian champion stripes. And Paulina Royakers, the, the fast nature of this course today is helping the CCC live rider just, uh, just gradually close those gaps down. She's a phenomenal rider on the road as well. So uh, they're now uh, giving us some shots of the ambulance. Don't know who the director is today. <laughs> it's sometimes ride has gone down and then uh, hopefully we'll get a report afterwards. So uh, we'll uh, try and update, update you on that if we get any uh, reports. Here we are on uh, lap three. Uh, two leaders, Annie Van Alphen and Sana Kant. Van carries that pace. Uh, you saw how quick um, on the planks as uh, Blanca Katavas. Nice bunny hop there as well. She's seen Annie Van Alphen. That's just a confidence thing as well, isn't it, Jeremy? We just see uh, Katavas just hold, holding that speed through there. It was kind of the same for um, Anna Kay when she first started to bunny hop the planks a little bit earlier on in the season. It's that whole, okay, I know we can do this. It's just doing it in a race situation and doing it on TV as well. That's right, yeah. I mean, I think the thing that's, uh, you know, so impressive about Anik Van Alpen is that she's so young. You know, she's uh, she's born, you know, February 1st, 1999. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty close to when I graduated high school. So, um, this is this is kind of how it goes. You know, you're the young and up and coming rider, and then you 
are the rider. And right now, I think she's experiencing that. She's probably experiencing a little bit of what she's looked up to for a very long time as being in this sport, you know, looking at someone like Sana Khan, now going up against them. It takes a long time for a rider to be able to get to that place where she feels comfortable in laying down an attack like she's doing right now. You can see the difference in their style and their position. You know, Khan, more refined, has had a lot more time on the bike at the front going this hard. Anik Van Alphen, this is a result that she desperately wants. This is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of the race, right? She's she's not she doesn't care about tomorrow. She cares about today. She's thinking, can I beat the world champion here in St. Nicholas on a televised race in the Heartland during the Christmas block? If that's possible, she knows what she knows that that is going to be the biggest result of her very young and up and coming career at this moment. You can see now lap four of six. We thought you can see it's a quick race. So and as Sana Cat now goes down the right, Van Alphen just bosses back, just uh, tries to. Uh, Show the national champion it's starting to get physical here. Sana can't try a little attack now. She's just starting to uh, try and stamp her authority on this race now. As uh, Annie Van Alphen just sensed that the world champion was just starting to attack. Different lines for these two riders. Van Alphen nicely done there. Drops around through the bottom of that section. Tries to get through on the inside. So she's uh, just 20 years old. But Blanca Katavas is gradually finding her way back so is Lara Vodonska oh Van Alphen just loses it there that has the advantage to Sana Kant and that will be again these are the small minute errors that creep in into the riding and that allows the uh, the Hungarian rider to come back just you just saw that front wheel dig in and uh, Annick Van Alphen going down yeah, it's uh, here we go. Got a little bit of a replay here, but you can just see, you know, she's just on the edge, and this is exactly what I was talking about a little bit more. Kant, a little more refined on the bike. You can tell with her position, she's just feeling a little bit more comfortable from the years and years of riding the same position, knowing the tire pressures, you know, exactly knows how to get into that stuff. Whereas someone like Van Alphen, a little bit less experienced, younger rider coming into it, of course, a little bit over her head, trying to match the world champion's pace, probably a little thrown off, in fact, by the fact that the world champ tried to come in, um, you know, on the inside of her for that technical section but that's exactly why and that's what i've been talking about Sonicon's experience marty has been able to tell her i know that an even often is not as good at this section as i am and i'm not willing to let her mess up in front of me i'm going to push the pace here because she's taken a note she noticed that she wasn't as good on it a lap before and then she pushed the pace there and so the outcome is exactly what Sonicon wanted and this is how what you were saying how she changes her racing style this is the way that she's going to need to race in the future. She's going to need to lean more on her experience and less on her uh, brute force. Trying to get back now. These uh, four riders spread out across this section. Then you can see the gap is growing back to the next riders. Thanks all of you for getting on board over on the chat. Andrea Koritsky just asking, what can you do to help GCN continue to broadcast these races? Just keep watching, keep sharing, tell your friends, let the world know that we've got live cyclocross. We have so much live cross all winter. If you want to keep uh, going, keep going, keep building, just keep spreading the word, keep watching, and uh, we'll do. We will uh, thanks for all your uh, help brian travis uh, just will uh, remind you just that if you want to upload your videos go onto the app or onto gcn.eu forward slash upload and you can uh, do that thanks all of you for getting on board by travis uh, give a little shout out to uh, fion james who's in there there's the gap now on this section and uh, sana can you've seen from the uh, first lap out really had the power through that section van alphen is battling to try and come back to the world champion and uh, it's definitely a fast day into this little drop here through the uh, the kind of bricks through that little trench the world champion you can see he's got the uh, the skin suit unzipped at the front it's nine degrees celsius today that's 47 to 48 degrees fahrenheit they uh, said there was a forecast there was a little bit of rain earlier on can uh, the uh, the young dutch rider get back here and van alphen yeah, they're going. They're definitely, it looks like we've got a battle for the podium for sure as we see Laura Verdanschot coming back into the picture now after that little bit of a crash. She's now on Blanca Cadavasta's wheel, and so it looks like these riders are now pretty close. Anybody here looking for that second spot, Sonicant has a bit of a gap, which is uh, which is good for her, but it's not enough, Marty. Anything can happen. One small chain hiccup, a, uh, a small dig dig in with that front wheel like you were talking about on one of those off cambers could, be, uh, could spell disaster. So definitely nothing in the bag on such a fast course like we're seeing here today in St. Nicholas. 
Anik Van Alford shifts the hands into the centre of the bars, carries that speed through the bunny hops. Nicely done, kicks it out of there as uh, Laurel Vidonskot just manages to find a way past the uh, national champion of Hungary and then tucks down into the wheel of uh, Laurel Vidonskot. So thanks all of you, great uh, to hear from you. Mac Track getting on board, Adam Gilbert gradually enjoying the coverage, Jim Martin from Milford in Delaware, Paul Hurd, thanks for uh, getting on board, Georgie. Uh, Jordi Escula from uh, Catalonia, and a little shout out to the Macclesfield Supercross coming on the 29th of uh, December. Maybe we'll carry that one one day. Uh, be good to see. Vad Donchkot, just again, she looked, uh, when you get that sort of tumble that she had, that was what handed these uh, the duo the advantage when she went over the top uh, in the sand. You could see right from the off that Lara Vad was on a was on a good day. And you just got to chase this down over the last couple of laps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she's a rider that I would have expected to be here as a pre-race favorite. You know, she's got a, she's had a good year. She's come on strong. She's continued to build form throughout the year, and that's always a good thing for a rider. If they start out slow and then they stay, you know, kind of down in that lower half, you know that there's an injury or an illness or motivation. Something's going on. But when you start to see them kind of picking up steam throughout the year, that's always a very good sign as you go towards the national championships and the world championships. Because really, while a lot of, uh, you know, the United States and some of these other countries do wrap up, um, in Europe, really, this is the heart of the cross season now. This is the most important period, the Christmas period, as well as the uh, national and world championships. And no surprise to see Sana Khan knowing exactly how to time that to perfection as she's um, in the uh, in the driver's seat at this race here in St. Nicholas. She is indeed. If you go back through the years, back to 2014, Sana Khan won it that year. Then in February the next year, the, uh, it was Talita de Jong that won it. Then Sana Khan in 2016, 2017, it was Lucinda Brand, And then last year Sana Khan out sprinting her cousin Lowe Sells this head-on shot here they're going to go in to a lap five of six Annie Van Alphen that little tumble that she took after being with Sana Khan she's now chasing this race down Sana the world champion hunting that first victory of the season and for Annie Van Alphen hunting that first big elite breakthrough victory Sana Khan here coming through you can see that she is definitely burning some matches to try to get this first win that's what I was talking about Marty she looks like she's uh, like a horse out of the gate just kind of like pushing pumping she really when you're a rider that's at her level taking a taking a victory means a lot you know I think mentally physically of course knowing that your level's there but also emotionally you know a win is a win it feels very good to be able to uh, to be able to put it all together she's no stranger to that but she hasn't had a lot this year the other riders you know have been taking the limelight and really even though she's had a lot of strong rides she hasn't been able to put her hands up yet and, and that i think is um, is very important for for a big rider like sonic Khan to be able to put everything together um, to be able to take that momentum into this Christmas block is going to be very, very positive for the rest of her season. Paulina Royek is going through here, just ahead of Kim van der Steen. Give you a few more shout outs before we get into the uh, last few laps. Uh, Paulina Sai from Nan, thanks for checking in. Wilson Vasquez, Deep Mella from Tasmania. Good to see. Uh, it's always good to do a little map of where you're all watching us here. We have a great cyclocross community on GCN Racing. Thomas Cintado uh, checking in from uh, Chicago. As well, Colin Berry, Van Smith, uh, all uh, checking in as well. On the Veda from Minnesota, Aaron Savona from Detroit. Thanks for all getting on board. And Rob Visser from Canada, you're watching a great race again. The world champion Sana Kant is in the lead, being chased hard by uh, the young Dutch rider Annie Van Alphen, 20 years old. She was with the world champion. He was just starting to boss her way through to the front, as uh, in the style that Sana Kant does. But Annie Van Alphen behind is still looking good she is not giving up without a fight as uh, it's a busy weekend of racing as we go in to the time of uh, what is one of the biz as Jeremy said one of the busiest times of the year nine races in 15 days in this part of the world that we have it's the Namur World Cup uh, tomorrow and, uh, got a lot of changes to that course as you can see Blanca Vaz with Don Scott Blanca Vaz here just getting uh, back in front of Lara Vodonskot. So there's a great battle going on here as well for the, the third spot on the podium. There could be a great sprint between uh, these two riders. Sana Khan just settling uh, into her rhythm. And this is what we, a lot of people, and um, we talk about when you have discussions with anyone at the top of 
World Cyclocross, they always say, yeah, but Sana can't be on form for the World Championships. She always is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's not just that she's on form. She looks good on the bike right now. I, my personal, my personal opinion is that she looks like she has done a nice training block. That she's that she's really taking care of herself, and she's uh, she looks to have a little bit more um, snap right now, and she looks to be comfortable when going really hard. Which uh, you know, I, ha I can't say that I saw that in the early part of the season for sure. Um, it's hard because you can't really study the World Champion when she's not riding in the front group so it's hard to it's hard to know how she pins against the other riders but as this big block of, of racing comes up we're certainly gonna she's gonna have to show all of her cards and she's gonna want to take some additional victories so today is an important uh, an important day in her campaign for this year here she comes Sana can through there and the head of the race just starting to pick up some lapped riders uh, just ahead of her thus is the uh, the speed that she is is a rocking around this course here today. Karen de Coulinard just gets caught there. So far this season, the form of the world champion, second in Heaton, third at the Niels Albert Land Cross in Bohm, second in Rudevolder, second at the Flandrian Cross, second at the Ambient Cross. So still plenty of podiums. So uh, we go back to Hoogstraten um, in last season was the, the last victory that she had the uh, the shot hit of our second place rider closely followed by the uh, the chasing duo that are looking for the next spots on the podium our lap rider here just has a glance back knows that she's uh, being caught by those riders behind good battle between uh, these two for that next spot van alford kicks it again can uh, she's got to do this hasn't she jeremy if, if that sana can't has any sort of problem on any of the technical sections here and he could be right back in the mix. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that uh, on such a fast course like this, there's no question that a very small error, it, it adds up very quickly because, like I said, you know, unfortunately, if you go down on one of these sections, it hits hard. You know, it's very, these, these off cambers are very, very steep. There's a lot of speed on this track overall. So when you go down here, it's not at three, four, five miles per hour. You know, you're going 20 miles per hour and hit the ground and it's, it's firm. So, yeah, as we see here, it's uh, Blanca Caravas and Laura Verdun shot kind of battling for that third place position. Um, as you uh, as you see now, Van Alphen really hunting down the world champ. Wants to be able to put this race together and try to get back to there and, and minimize the gap. She was going super hard after the barriers to be able to use that advantage to bring down a couple of seconds. And uh, Sonicott will be looking back on different sections of the course, Marty, and seeing where is Van Alphen, where are my competitors, am I gaining or am I losing time despite the effort that I'm putting in? She's just looking a lot more comfortable. We've seen her so far this season. This is the the smoother. This is the Sana Camp that we know. Just going to give a little shout out before we get to the uh, the uh, last lap here. Uh, I've got a sense of love out to Mark Shaw in hospital, waiting for an operation. He broke his leg on Wednesday. Get well soon, Mark. Thanks for watching us. Make sure we've got lots to keep you amused if you've got a bit of an extended stay. So thanks for uh, checking in. Get well soon. Annick Van Alphen uh, just out of that sand section, runs up on to the home straight here. I'm loving this battle between these two. It's This is going to come right down to the wire between these two and uh, Blanca Katavas manages to ride that section and Lara Vodonska has to sprint to stay with her as we go through the line. Yeah, those types of accelerations late in the race, Marty, are the things that really do start to kind of whittle away at a rider, you know, so Vodonska going to have to close that gap, already had to close that gap earlier in the race, so Blanca Katavas doing herself a big favor there by getting that. It's laying down a big attack at this time in the race, so you can see the gap now, so that might be, that's going to be tough for Verdonska shot to come back in this last uh, you know seven eight minutes to be able to, to bring that back Blanca Caravas knows that if she's got the legs to be able to hold this off she's got a good position now with the gap through there onto this section you see that fast run right into this uh, this bank and Van Alphen last lap charge here from the Dutch rider to try and get back to Sana County now drops through this big sweeping uh, section, manages to dismount. Smoothly done there by the rainbow jersey. There's Van Alphen. Can she just throw everything now that she's got? This is uh, she has got absolutely nothing to lose. Karen Verhey starting and uh, low sales with Paulina Royek is right behind. 
That was uh, that was interesting there. Sonicon having a little bit of a dab there on that off-camera section where we saw Van Alphen go down last time. Not looking as clean here as we get into this last lap. She was a little bit came into that, took the high line. I was surprised by that, given the um, given that she doesn't have to protect that inside line. This section, as you can tell, there's one rut. It's very very steep off camber, kind of uh, awkward. Have to get off the bike there on an off camber section, but definitely faster to get back on than to run the whole thing. But Sonicon there with a small bobble, giving a couple seconds back. As you can see, she's feeling the pressure. She can hear the crowd yelling for Van Alphen behind, and she's surprised. She's going as hard as she can, but she's not able to, to get rid of the young Dutch rider. So now she's opening it back up. She really wants this. You can see she's actually she's upset that she's uh, that she's had that error, and she's allowed Van Alphen to take back a couple of seconds because she knows the barriers are coming up where Van Alphen's going to be able to potentially reattach to the world champ. Here we go. We have got a charge. This young rider, 20 years old, from the Netherlands, as Jeremy said, they're coming into the technical sections that will suit her. Uh, a real emerging talent. She's had one victory over in uh, Germany this season, but nothing of uh, this level's had some podiums as well. Um, so far this season, Sarnakan gives a glance back over that left shoulder. Can Van Alphen get back into contention here on this final? lap slowly little by little she's just finding her way back to the world champion she's looking for that big breakthrough elite victory is she gonna get on here Annick Van Alphen just using that power now to try and close down I think she's gonna make this Jeremy I do. I think she's going to reattach here as we come into the barriers. That's definitely going to be going through a, a foresty section here on the backside of the course. They go over some small things, and then they're going to come into these barriers. And that's where we're, I think Van Alphen has that that in her that feather in her cap, like I talked about, Marty. And Sana Kant knows it. all that experience. But these sections, very, very fast. They need to be careful as they come down near the water. One small error can, um, can make it. But this is where Van Alphen's going to look at this and say, I'm willing to take this risk. You know, there's a, there's a lot of times in a rider's career where you're like, I'm not willing to take this risk, but something like this. Oh, oh cat goes so down and it's back. Annick Van Alphen, the favor swings down. She dabs the foot as well. Now we have a race on our hands. Sana Kat goes down, tries to get her foot in. Van Alphen comes through to the front, and that is Cyclocross at the uh, that is why we love Cross, the uh, world champion. You could see all the time she was glancing back to see where Annick Van Alphen was, and that little mistake, and it opens the door yet again for Annick Van Alphen, the BNS Technics Concrete House rider, to come through to the front. Absolutely. And this is exactly what I was talking about. She's just a little too high on that line there. She needed to be a little bit lower. She decided to take that higher line. This has been giving riders trouble all day, but this is exactly what I'm talking about, Marty. These very fast off cambers really, really have the ability to just knock it out of rider. Sonicot able to kind of regain some um, some perspective here, understand what's happened, and she's able to hop back down Van Alphen's wheel. The race isn't over. This is going to be interesting. As they come in here to the barriers, Sonicot's going to need to dig here, going to try to come... Uh, neck and neck with Van Alphen to minimize the damage that Van Alphen will do. She actually is able to run it as fast. Van Alphen now takes a dig at the world champion. World champion's able to respond. She, oh, Marty, she's going all in right now. Like I said, trying to take this big win against the world champion, burning a ton of matches. Let's have a look at from this angle. Sana Kant, you can see there is almost a two-wheel slide out as she got into that section. Yeah, the uh, it's always hard to be hunted, you know, Marty, and she was being hunted, but now she's in the pass position. She's watching Van Alphen. She's seeing where she is. They're both in the rivet. They're trying to they're trying to do big season rides here. But you see the world champions experience coming into that lower line now, knowing that she's got to switch it up. She wants to be into that sand section first. The race isn't necessarily to the finish line because it's once they're back on the bike, it's short. But Van Alphen's going to try to lead into the sand. She's got the world champion under pressure. But Sana Kant, with all of her experience, knows that she needs to be first when she gets to that sand section. So Annick Van Alphen manages to bunny hop that section again, kicks on and manages to open just a few meters now on Sana Kant. Is this going to be the breakthrough victory that this rider has been hunting for? We've said that the skills that we've seen over the last couple of seasons from Annick Van Alphen being able to bunny hop the planks and taking that big concrete section. And you can see the head is just nodding here from Sana Kant. She knows that she is in a battle here. Can she find her way back and try and outsprint Annick Van Alphen in that home straight? 
Oh, Marty, the new generation, the status quo. And Van Alphen takes no chances here, jumps off, but it is the world champ right on her wheel. She knows she needs to be fast into the pedals, Marty. I'm going to give it to you for the sprint finish. Out of that section, who gets their feet in first? It's going to be a straight race to the line. Sana Kant gets in front. You can see the teammates now of Anik Van Alphen. Sana Kant now opens up her sprint. Van Alphen tucks in. She's had some work to do. It's going to be the world champion. But respect to Anik Van Alphen for the ride that she's put in. Sana Kant out sprints. She knows that she's been in a battle here. She doesn't want to let it go. Sana Kant takes the victory. Anik Van Alphen just didn't have have enough left for the sprint but what a race this was an emerging ride here from Annick van Alphen going up against the world champion takes second Blanca Catavas is going to ride in here for third place another solid day for uh, Kat uh, Blanca Catavas Jeremy what a sprint you can see Annick van Alphen had absolutely emptied the tank there Oh man, yes. Uh, as we see Laura Verdadshot coming in here in fourth place, a great battle from her as well. But wow, Marty, that was definitely one of the best races we've seen in a long time. Um, just seeing Van Alphen so hungry, um, really putting it in and not being nervous to take the world champ on. You know, that's that's something. When you've had that poster of that rider on the wall, you know, I'm making that up. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm assuming <laughs> that uh, she's looked up to the world champion and she respects her deeply. To be able to kind of get in that position where you know, hey, I need to go and I'm going to past her now i'm gonna make it lay down an attack and i'm gonna put i'm gonna put everything into this um there's definitely gonna be some sore legs tonight there's no question that they burned some some serious matches on this effort today but um but to be able to see her put all those things together like i said marty the status quo the new generation are using that bunny hopping technique using the ability technically to be able to gain time over the uh over the older riders that don't necessarily have that skill set because it wasn't necessary but now you can say that it has absolutely changed the outcome of this race and is, a, uh, is something that all of these riders are going to need to have in their back pocket in the future. They are indeed. Paulina Royakas comes in for CCC Live. That's going to be seventh place for Royakas today. Karen, uh, the uh, Kim van der Steiner comes in uh, next for Tartaletto Eastrex. That's going to be a ninth place uh, finish for her today. Great. Right, high fives the crowd on the way in. So a good performance for the uh, CCC Libro today. Pauline Royakas gets a great victory, a great ride for her. Joyce van der Beken, uh, Joyce van der Beken is coming in now for uh, ninth place. So we'll uh, we'll get the top ten home. So. Uh, Coming in there, that's ninth place for the former Belgian champion. Waves to the crowd. And we'll just wait for our 10th place uh, rider home. I think we've got a bit of a sprint just emerging behind. And it's uh, Susan Verhoeven um, that comes in for 10th place. Verhoeven, and uh, that's... Uh, a good day. Mashka Mulder just comes in for 11th. Let's have a replay of the finish. Jeremy, what a race. You can see Annick Van Alphen. Her teammates were all out there at the end just watching this one home. Take us through the sprint. Oh, man. She just, you know, it was uh, Van Alphen kind of led into that last sand section in the world champ. Didn't look like she knew she had it. She knew she was in for a battle. She continues this sprint here, not looking back as a solid pro. She knows she's got a good kick on her. Waiting it out, started it up nice and slow. Doesn't realize the elation right until the end there. And she's so happy. You can see the, yes, you know, I finally have opened up my win, my win campaign for the year. Able to take this victory over, say, a, a young and up-and-coming star that is Anik Van Alphen. I need you as well on that, on that sprint that you... She didn't, she didn't hang around either, did she? She properly kicked on there. She, there was absolutely no checking back over the shoulder just to see when she's got it. Because you saw the gap that she managed to open over Annick Van Alphen in that sprint. There was, she was just, there was nothing being, being left to chance there. 
totally. I mean, and it was funny because Van Alphen really did use her strengths to the best that she could. You know, she knew jumping the barriers, she had to soften Sonicon up. She did. She knew, you know, Sonicon was on the rivet. She heard her come back because of the lap before. She was able to take a little bit more time. Um, and it slowly just came back together. Van Alphen then noticed another opportunity with that um, with that concrete kind of plank that was there with the carpet over it. She was able to get over that um, and then open up another gap. So she went all in on her strengths and bet on them strongly. And it, uh, and it paid off. You know, she basically came in the last turn in front of the world champion. Very, very exciting things to come for this young and up and coming rider from the Netherlands. Let's have a little look back at the highlights of what was a phenomenal race and a great start there from the, the Group Hens Mass rider, uh, Mashka Mulder. And already early on there, you saw Sana Khan pressed on, really had the power there, Jeremy, didn't she? The world champion right from the off. Um, Annie Van Alphen, Blanca Katavas again, and that little gap just opening up on that on that section. Yeah, and then you can see this is the second lap where she was able to ride um, and about three quarters of the way through and then hopped off and ran, whereas the first time she tried to ride through. But now you're seeing that she's uh, the, the world champ, Sonicon, is, is running the barriers and Anique Van Alphen is riding them. It was uh, Anique Van Alphen able to get back to her, lead the world champion, um, was you know going head to head with her the whole time, but had that unfortunate crash in the off camera section where we've seen a lot of trouble this today from a, a slew of different riders. And then Sonicon. Um, Opening up that jersey, it's warm there today, 50 degrees or so uh, Fahrenheit, which is about almost 10 degrees uh, centigrade. But then the world champ comes in with, uh, on the last lap with a nice gap, but unfortunately, uh, it was not good on the off-camera section. Right, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, she just went down heavily there, and uh, that allowed Annick Van Alphen, who also had a little skip as she got off the bike there. It allowed her to come back to the front and uh, on those sections that really suited her. And you can see now Annick Van Alphen, as the race goes on, the confidence is growing. She's really carrying and holding that speed through the planks, through that big concrete barrier. She almost looked like she couldn't quite get her foot in. Uh, at the end of, of that section there, she, she was absolutely spent. After that chase, Sana Kant will know that she's been in a battle today. They were trading blows throughout that race. I think what stood out for me though there, Jeremy, was the, the maturity there in that ride of Annick Van Alphen. Didn't panic when she went down, just gradually just ground it out, just found her way back to Sana Kant's wheel. Yeah, like I said, it takes a lot to be able to do that for someone that you probably looked up to your whole life. You know, you just you, you want to be in that position. You want to be at the front of these races, but to actually be in that position, you have to be there a couple times and lose. Um, she's no stranger to being at the front of the races. You know, she's definitely one of the riders that I would think about for the under 23 world championships, potentially being um, on the podium there and up in the front. She's got a lot of great skill sets. She's been riding a fantastic season, you know, week in and week out. We've seen her coming into it. It's uh, it's exciting times for the young, the young side of the women's sport. I know, and I was watching some of the comments on the on the forum for people saying, "Well, you know, so and so's not here, so and so's not here, so and so's not here." But you you can only race who's there on the day, can't you? And that has got to be one of the races of the season so far, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And uh, and Anique Van Alphen's no stranger. She's been in the top three. She's been on the podium. She's been riding at the front of these races, maybe, you know, 50, 60, uh, excuse me, um, 30 to 40 minutes of it. Um, but then just coming off on that last lap. But uh, but yeah, but she's been very strong. Sana Kant making that front group. I definitely think Sana Kant is on a, a, a one tier up from where she's been um form wise looks like she's very fit she looks like she's got a good uh, a good base under her now and she's excited for this uh christmas period yeah she just looked a lot smoother today she's looked a little bit ragged not quite her uh, usual self so far this season so really good to see her back really good to see her getting that uh, first victory season right a lot of you as well the men's race starts on the hour so it's just under 30 minutes time you can take that most of uh, the live uh, races that we've got um this season apart from uh, the degum night race so we've got uh, a lot of that uh, coming up over the uh, the next few weeks so we're going into a, a very busy time here on uh, GCN racing as well Jeremy um, Blank, uh, we've seen uh, Blanca Catavas um, just gradually emerge this season I and mean, we saw for the first time there in Koppenberg um, where she she was in the, riding in that top 10 and just race on race for me as well just 18 years old the future is so <laughs> bright isn't it 
Yeah, I mean, all you know, we 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 know Laura Verdon Scott's name, right? She's been she's a young and up and coming rider. We know um, we know obviously all of the riders that are there: Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Anna Marie Wurst, uh, Ellen Noble. All of these riders are young, the new generation. Um, as we see the top ten here, there are so many young riders that are now starting to put themselves, just like we saw in the men's field a couple of years ago, into the top in the front of these races. Sana Khan, Anik Van Alphen, Blanca Katavas, Lara Vedonjok, Karen Vahestrat on low sales, Paulina Royekas, Kim van der Steena, Joyce uh, van der Beken, and uh, Suzanne Verhoeven was your top 10 in uh, that one today. What a race, yeah. epic finish we had. I, I really, Absolutely. I really, really, I really, really enjoyed it. I think as well, we're not far away now from that victory, that big breakthrough win from uh, Anik Van Alphen. And it's such, uh, I don't know about you, Jeremy, but it's such a privileged position as a, as a commentator to be able to gradually bring these riders through and see this victory. Because I remember when commentating on those first big World Cup wins of, of Sana Khan, and now the next generation are, are coming through. Yeah, it's a uh, if the racing is going to be like this throughout the entire cursed period, the Christmas period, then we have a uh, I'm going to need to take naps during the day because that was such a good race to watch. You know, I think um, this is for anyone that doesn't know, this is the first race of the big Christmas period, which kicks off now in um, in Belgium, where the riders are going to race a ton of races over the next uh, couple, basically two weeks. They're going to be racing almost every day or with very small breaks. I think the only days off are maybe Christmas and one other one. So there's so much cyclocross going on. This is a big period for these riders and um, there's going to be a lot of great racing to call and to watch. There is. So make sure that you subscribe to GCN Racing. Hit that bell icon. You can schedule your broadcast as well. We're going to have a little bit of halftime uh, entertainment. Jeremy's been out and about so far this winter. So he's, uh, this is one of our cyclocross legends. He caught up with Bart Vellens and the 777 team. And we're also going to give you, having seen Anik Van Alphen and Bunny Hop and those barriers, I hope you're all inspired. We're going to uh, have Jeremy's little masterclass on how you can do the same if you're not doing it already. Today is the first race of the DVV Trophy. I'm here with a friend, Bart Hi. Wellens, Hello. the two-time Belgian champion, two-time world champion. Bart, thanks for coming out. You're welcome. Bart Wellens is the kind of badass cyclocross racer that fans around the globe loved. Bart's results, personality, and character transcend generations in Belgian cyclocross lore. Even today, he is as popular as ever. His infamous duels on the heyday with Sven Nice are still talked about in the sport today as one of the most intense rivalries amongst friends that the sport has ever witnessed. His talent on the bike and his fast-paced lifestyle attracted a raid of wild and crazy supporters that followed him to events week in and week out and made him one of the kings of cross. Bart retired from pro racing in 2015 and has since been working within the sport doing what he loves. Currently, he is the director of the Krayefin Fridstads team and the women's powerhouse program 777.be, which is home to Yara Casterline, Anna Marie Wurst, as well as Alice Arzufi. Bart let us run around with him for the day to understand not only everything that he puts into the program, but what goes into having success at the highest level. You're here today with the women's 777.be team, and we're gonna follow you around as you talk about yes. the girls, you give them tips, you give them yep. pointers, you're in the pits. What is your role with them now? What do you do? Oh, I do almost everything. Um, I search the sponsors before the season, but in the season especially, we give team trainings, uh, we give uh, my advice to the ladies uh, on the track, like today, pressure, um, which uh, yeah, profiles they need to ride, uh, to how to take corners, running, riding, yes. 
all that stuff. And you give them probably a lot of motivation. Like they're out there, it's a lot to think about. You're at the race, there's people, there's things going on, press, uh, fans, the track conditions are changing, you see something, you're here to help them with all that. That's the reason why I'm here and I'm, yeah, I'm running like 40,000 steps a day when it's a race day, so, but that's my job and I love it. All right, we're gonna follow you around. Thanks for having us today. Okay. The Koppenberg is a seriously steep cobbled climb located in the Flemish Ardennes and is one of the most historic and famous climbs in all of Belgium. The venue is drenched in cycling history from over the years and is widely known for its inclusion in the Tour of Flanders classic road race happening each spring. Now every November, the cobbled climb in its seriously sloped hillside transforms into one of the most treacherous and difficult race courses on the cross circuit every season. The 777 squad, as it's known to its fans, is a professional all-women cyclocross team consisting of Dutch riders Yara Kasterlein, who is the current European champion, Anna-Marie Wurst, who is currently ranked first in the world on the UCI rankings, and Alice Arzufi, who last year famously won the Super Prestige round in Havre and this year in Boom. The program is in its second year and has become one of, if not the best, women's professional cross team on the circuit. Hello, I'm Anne-Marie Worst. I'm coming from the Netherlands and I'm 23 years old. Hi, I am Alice Maria Arzuppi and I am 25 years old. My name is Jare Kastelein. I'm 22 years old and I come from the Netherlands. Ready, Carla? Yeah. Oh, your phone's ringing. You need to take it? Oh, okay, that's yeah. Camille. For Camille! And then your own tempo. Yeah. Not not unlocking. Like, you will be yeah, unlocked, but, but not full 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 yeah, 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 yeah. in the beginning. Your tempo. Yeah. Twee rijten. Heb je dan die chicanetjes rechts naar beneden, yeah. links rechts, links. Die twee laatste. Maria de fiets die was plat van achter, maar die heeft in die oranje fiets een fiets, een fiets gekregen met tuben, waar dat twee bar in staat, dat is veel te hard. Dus die gaat direct wisselen. All right, Bart. So what has happened has been already super intense day. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. In, in the last moments, uh, I think three minutes before the start, and Marie called that she had a flat tire, oh. and the spare bike was not already yet Red on, the, right on, on the start. Yeah. Oh. So it's busy, big, big hectical. Okay. So and uh, on that moment, Alice. Uh, asked uh, that she says stress because the uh, the pressure was not good uh, in here too. So it was <laughs> on five minutes. Okay, a lot was, of problems. Yeah, yeah, you no, have, yeah. You have to put the fires out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and calm down them. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of a problem from our mechanic maybe, but yeah. The reigning American national champion with number 11, Katie Compton. Met start nummer 10 voor Paul Sazen Bingo, Laura Verdonschop. Dus dat is wel leuk en ik stond wel veel scherper dan nu, maar het was wel een hele leuke. Op deze wedstrijd, vierde plaats en voor allemaal vijf. Jelle Kampse, Shani 7, 7. Jonal de Zeuren, 8, Jette Beek aan 9. Watch the lights, so as we go straight up the Koppenberg. The, a pretty brutal start to this one and we are off and a racing Lechner. Gets a good start there, the Italian champion first. Her Beth Crompton, Anna Kay, have uh, got good starts here. Yara Castelline again, she had a great breakthrough. K 
Castellan and Lechner. Lechner again over the last uh, few weeks. Triple seven again, looking good. And a reverse just comes through here. Okay, Bart, so you got two riders in the front right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And? <laughs> This is the first time that this track is muddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. new track. The, the new track. From right? a couple years now, it's been like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and now, it's, yeah. This morning was also a bit dry. Yeah. But now with the, yeah, it's not really raining, but it's yeah, like slick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. slick. Because the, the the underground is hard, and just the top of it, it's yeah, a bit mud, and it's so slippery. Even with the with the rhinos. It's so slippery. What do you think about with Yara Castellan off the front and Anna Marie? What are you saying to them when they're in this position? Just still that focus, nothing more. I, I can help them ride, riding faster, yeah. but I can say search the green lines because it's so important on, on a track like this. There where is the grass, there you have the grip, there you can ride. So, and mostly when they ride, it's like just in the front. And I hope that I can teach them or say them on the green lines. Yes. That's yeah. my best English to, to confirm them and then yeah. also say to the grass. Staying on the grass. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah, stay yeah. where there's traction. Yeah, where the traction is and still focus on this track, focus. Here's your chaser, and an inverse of triple seven. So this team, what a start to the year that they have had. Ava Lechner from Krefin. Alicia Maria Azufi gets back on to Ava Lechner. Oh, Castellan slides out. Bart, you got an interesting situation here. You got your two riders are in the front. Anna Marie Worst, Yara Castellan. What are, what are we thinking about? What, are, what What is your sense right now? You're obviously, yeah. it's not tactical. No, 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 it's hard to hard. It's also a classification here on time. So uh, the DVV uh, trophy is with the uh, time classification, so she needs to ride for every second. And Yara and Anna Marie. But the best thing is also Alice is on three. So it will can be possible that we have one, two and three for the first time this season. So <laughs> I'm a little stressed now. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> I understand. And what are you, besides, Besides that, what are you thinking about when you see Anna Marie Wurst chasing down Yara Castellan? Like, do you say something to them or is it not tactical like that because they're in the first three? No, because they are fighting women to women. They need to do right, both full gas. Okay. They are... No tactics today. No tactics, no, no, no. Especially not with with this, yeah. This type of track. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. If, if it's flat and, and with a group, there is no group anymore okay, here. Yeah. So this is hard to hard. Yes. And it's, it's a time classification, so they need to ride for every second, all three. First, trying to close the gap, but the uh, camera angle just foreshortens it very slightly. Yara Kastelaj takes the victory here in the Koppenberg Cross. Another phenomenal victory comes to a halt at the top, totally exhausted. First takes second. Accelerator is going to be a triple seven podium. Alicia Maria Zufi. You had your teammate, Anna Marie, was chasing you from behind. Did you think at any point maybe something with that? Uh, she is faster and better in the, in the downhill and the technical uh, pass, but I think I'm stronger in the uphill. And so I had some seconds before the uphill and I said, okay, I did today and it's, it's just a dream. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Standing at the start and we got five minutes to go and then my, I, I feels feeling that I have a flat, flat tire and uh, then I get a bike but the pressure was way too high it was not for this park for this track and then in the first me uh, mechanical zone I have to switch my bike so then I lost a lot of place because everyone was still close together I'm happy with the with my ride I think I closed the gap 
in the last lap really much. I think it was still maybe at the end 10, 15 seconds. So I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. But all, yeah, I'm happy with it. <laughs> After all. <laughs> yeah. Bart, you guys tore it up out there. One, two, three. It has to feel good. Yeah, it's very <laughs> good. Honestly, we are one, two, three, and four because we have also the Crea Fin Freestats team yes. with Eva Lechner. Yes. So it's a bit, yeah it's, yeah, it's a big day, a great day today. Yeah, I think you guys go home. There's probably not a lot to talk about. You're just like, hey, everybody, good job. Rest up because they're racing again on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So now it's recovered for them. For us, it's the big work now. There are some bikes were broken, so we need to fix them up tomorrow. Okay. So I'm gonna do also some scooter training with some guys. So it will be also a fully Saturday. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so obviously today went really well for Yara. Small problems for Anna Marie, but these things happen in racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's normal. In cyclocross, nothing is 100% perfect. Never. And it's Sometimes not it's improve something on that moment myself. So it's a, it was a perfect day yeah. for everybody. Also uh, with, with uh, Tim Merlier, with the pros, uh, the woman, it's perfect. Yeah. Perfect day. What do you have coming up? What is the now the big focus for the team? Um, yeah, we want to do the whole season a great job, but that's not easy for every week to be the best. On this week, I, on this moment, every week it's the best, but we will see. But now it's first uh, in two days Rudervoorde, and then we have uh, the European Championship. What's important for Anna Marie to defend her jersey, but yeah, now is Yara her big opponent, so we will see. Yeah. Also Alice in, in own in Italy. Um, but we will see. First the European and now we will see. We will we probably go also on training camp uh, with the ladies and also with some, some guys and then... A lot of organization stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. being the, For sure. A lot of being the ship boat captain. Yeah. You have to steer <laughs> yeah. it in the right direction. For sure. Bart, sure. I want to thank you so much for your time. Yeah, Appreciate it. And if you guys like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you guys want to leave a comment, tell us how much you like Bart, give that, give that down below. If you want to check out other great content, check it out right over here. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the Rectifix Series round three here, the vast land across in St. Nicholas. I hope you enjoyed uh, Jeremy's video there with Bart Wellens, a former winner here in uh, St. Nicholas, won this in 2009. He's done some great pieces as well. Check out his uh, interview and feature with Anna Marie Hurst as well. And you can also check out, we're running out of time in terms of before the men's race start for that bunny hop video. So make sure you check that out. There's loads of real technical stuff that Jeremy's been out and about filming. So yeah. Uh, you can check that out uh, yourself. Now, before we get into the men's race, which is in just under 10 minutes time, if you don't know what want or you don't want to know what happened in the elite women's race, you can look away in five, four, three, two, one. What a race we had. Uh, <laughs> Van Alphen and Sana Kant and uh, the young Dutch rider in the blue, red and black. It came down to a sprint after Annick Van Alphen had been with the world champion, got back on on that final lap. But in the sprint, Sana Kant was uh, making no mistake. That was the gap on the line. But they have that young rider there, just 20 years old, one of the real emerging talents. And there, another one, just 18 years old. Blanca Katavas from Hungary from that Dolcini Van Eyck team. What a season she is having. I don't think the uh, breakthrough victories are far away from those riders there. So Sana Kant takes it from Anik Van Alphen. Uh, Blanca Katavas, Lara Vadonshot, Karen Verheystraat and uh, up there. Low sales Paulina Royakers also up there in the top 10. There is uh, your podium. So Sana Kant from Anik Van Alphen and Blanca Katavas. What an emerging group of talent we have got in cyclocross at the moment. If you've been with us throughout the season um, in terms of uh, the races, you'll remember Blanca Katavas getting that. We saw it for the first time on the Koppenberg race. It was a really exciting one. And Anik Van Alphen over the course of the last couple of seasons, uh, because of that ability to money hop the plank, the cameras would go back and show her. So it's been 
really interesting to watch just that emergence of that talent and seeing her come through so before we get into the elite men's action as we said it's round three of the rex fit series doesn't carry a general classification but a lot of historic races let's cast our minds back to neil We have it, Matthew Vanderpool from Laurent Swake and Tice Arts. And if you weren't with us last week, that winning run, 35 races, 400 days for Matthew Vanderpool, finally came to an end last week. He followed it up the next day with a win, so he's already started his next uh, winning streak. Jeremy Powers is uh, with me to take you uh, through the elite men's race. Jeremy. As I said last week, it was the end of the winning run of Matthew Vanderpool. We saw him winning there in Neil. It had to come to an end at some point, didn't it? It's almost better that it did. You know, I think it. Um, I think it provides a bit of a, a. You know, okay, that's done. That whole thing that was going on. I don't have to keep up with this. You know, it's like the pressure of being able to kind of do that week in and week out. It just becomes a lot. So he can have a bad day. He can have an off day. He is human, although it sometimes is hard to believe. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but starting a new streak now. So he's on to. Uh, he's on to race. What is he on? Two already or three of of, of this new streak. So we'll see how. Uh, we'll see how long he can go this time. Although. That is an impressive record to take um, 35 plus wins in a row. For for Matthew and I was reading in the in the press as well. This is a race that kind of holds quite a special place in his heart, apparently, because again, this was where we've seen it in the elite women's race with the emergence of some young talent. But this was where he got his sort of first elite podium when he finished second behind uh, Niels Albert. At that time, he was his he was his team leader, and he got that by by millimeters. And it, from casting a mind's back, I think it was. 2013 um from memory but he's he's come off he's come an awfully long way since then isn't he yeah he has definitely i think um i think for someone like niels albert it was a bit of uh it was a bit of i don't want to let this go i don't want to i don't want to be taken over by this young and up and coming um vanderpool you know uh obviously he uh niels albert probably watched his father race audrey vanderpool and was able to see his dominance and there's probably a, maybe even a small amount of crossover to when they were at the races together um but um but they never went head to head so now i think that that race you know when he finished the line uh niels albert finished famously kind of looked back and gave up gave some hands like this is the next generation that's right behind me a young rider able to match me um and it was a very close on the finishing straight so yeah definitely a place where i think there's a lot of great history in the sport and um a place where vanderpool although he had been showing himself for a very long time in the elites was able to show himself for the first time Today, this is the start of a very busy time. Um, tomorrow is the Namur World Cup. So some riders have chosen to sit out uh, today and save their legs for what is a, one, of the, one of the toughest World Cups. Let's have a look at the, uh, the start list. Mathieu is here, of course. Quentin Hermans, who's having a, a phenomenal season. Tom Pidcock, Marcel Meissen. For me, Jeremy, I wanna, I'm, I'm pulling for Stevie today, big time. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely going to be coming into some better legs. Um, you know, definitely going down that list. Uh, Jens Adams and then Kerry Werner, the uh, the Pan American champion from the U.S. Dieter Van Tornhout, Wietje Bosmans, uh, Thomas De Hook, uh, and yeah, then there's quite a few other ones. We've got some. Uh, We've got Tetsuki Kajai from uh, Japan. We've got Cameron Mason, of course, who uh, we're all big uh, we're all big fans of. 
Cameron Mason. And uh, we've also got in there as well for uh, British fans, um, who's is the likes of uh, Finn Mansfield. And uh, Finn, Finn Mansfield, probably not that he would want to be well known for, but... Took a bit of a tumble into the water, I think it was. I think it was Nach van Vorden or, or somewhere like that. And I think it was Joris Neuvenhaus's sister who was videoing at the time. Finn managed to hit, uh, go into the water, but we've got quite a few precarious little sections like that today. Yes, a, uh, a expert water tester, always good on a track like this to be able to go and check the soil and, uh, and the water. So hopefully there's not any uh, dire need to be checking the water temps today. <laughs> So for those who uh, were with us uh, for the Elite Women's Race, before that one, don't forget to subscribe to GCN Racing. Hit that bell icon so that you're notified every time we upload a new video. We're going to go live. You do not want to miss any of the live race action that we've got coming up over the festive period. So many live days uh, racing. You won't want to miss any of that. Uh, give us a thumbs up on our live as well. Jeremy, we saw a little glimpse of the the track there. Do you think the the, the way they, they they've moved the sand section right to the end of the finish uh, start finish straight? Do you think that's gonna? Do you think that could affect things in in the men's race? Should it come down to a sprint at the end yeah i mean it's definitely we saw it in the uh in the women's race you know the riders were able to come up onto that finishing uh in that finishing hill and have a uh, have a good shot at a nice two up sprint so i think it's definitely possible today um this is of course where i think that the, the final uh race is going into that sand section and i think the first person onto that uh, onto the bricks there is going to be the uh is going to have a good shot at being able to take the win as the riders are starting to focus here you're seeing um Looking from uh, from on your screen from right to left, you're seeing uh, looks like Michael Van Torn had on the right there. Kerry Warner, Quinton Hedermans, um, you're seeing now Thomas Pitcock, and then the world champion Matthew Vanderpool. Um, to his left is Vincent Basteens, and then um, wait, we go the we are off and racing. Matthew Vanderpool, uh, Tom Pitcock, Kerry Werner just dropping back a little bit. Uh, Quentin Hermans, there's Denek Stieber in that De Koenig quick step. Bright blue, Vanderpool battling for that front position, but it's Quentin Hermans that gets it. Stevie gets a phenomenal start here, up to fourth place already is Janetek Stieber, and he's in third. He's right on the wheel of Matthew Vanderpool. And I think even after about 30 seconds of racing, we're licking our lips with Glee here at seeing Stiebar back up there. Absolutely, Stiebi, they know, is, uh, is the first to be reckoned with. Pro men, that was what I was talking about, Marty. There is an opportunity to ride it, but not a lot of men able to ride that section because of all the uh, footmarks that are in that hill from the years of racing here. Seeing uh, Quentin Hermans deciding to take, make easy work of this. Vanderpool going with the outside line. Two lines on that downhill section. Now they come into this tricky off-camera section. It's Quentin Hermann, Matthew Vanderpool with his foot out kicking along, and Stevie uh, follows suit there, having to hop off real quick. But Stevie Marty, like you said, looking very good for this uh, Christmas period we've got coming up. For someone like Stiebar as well, there's Tom Pitcock, your British champion, wearing uh, number three going through. That's Vita Bossmans, that's also uh, up there, Vinnie Bastions. Uh, all the way from the front, Stiebar, when you won what Zdenek uh, Stiebar has won in his career. And I think Lars Bohm, I think, has almost, you know, not had the luck that he needed to get into a race like this. You've got to start picking up those UCI points because Stieber didn't, you know, he had a great start, but he just used that road power to get back in there. Looks like we've uh, got a bit of an issue, a bit of a broken chain, I think, for Yannick Peters that goes through there. But Stieber getting a great start, and uh, this is what he needs. In order to be able to get up the start um, grid on, the, on certain races, Cameron Mason, you can see there as well from Trinity Racing, he needs to pick up podiums and performances in races like this that will help his gridding in every single race absolutely yeah i mean the thing about cb is that he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of respect in the in the uh, cyclocross peloton and of course the peloton all over the world as we see yannick peters here trying to get to the pit to be able to save his day and, and just uh, get the legs opened up if nothing else it looks like he's got a twisted chain there on but um but not in good condition. But getting back to Stevie Marty, I think that there's a, uh, just based on what I can see here, it looks like he is going to take this Christmas period seriously. And he's got um, he's got some more training in his legs and he's looking forward to using these races uh, as a big buildup into his classic season on the road. 
will also be hoping with if he does has a great road uh, great cross season win some races hopefully Patrick Lefebvre will uh, let him ride a little bit more cross because if he comes out and absolutely smashes it in the classics wins Paris-Roubaix or something like that he can go back to Patrick and say oh it was the cyclocross that was the difference I mean, I think he owes a big thank you to Van Aert and uh, Tim Merlier, uh, Matthew Vanderpoel, and the riders that have done well, as well as Tuner, you know, Quinton Hermann. All these riders have had success on the road at different periods, but doing it at a high level, you know, some of these other riders have done well, but in, not in pro tour races. But Vanderpoel and Wout Van Aert have really paved the way to allow these team managers to say, like, eh, I'll take another look at this, and it's, it's definitely it's possible, and it's p perhaps even good that you're doing the cyclocross in the winter. Leading out, Quentin Hermans, Mathieu van der Poel, Jdenek Stibar, Tom Pidcock just uh, trying to move up a little bit. Marcel Meissen, the German riders, had some great races over the last couple of weeks as well. Vinny Bastian, uh, Vita Bosman's also uh, well up there as well. And uh, Gianni Siebens is there. Let's just run you through your other uh, riders to watch out for, for fans from different countries. As we said, we've got uh, Tatsuki Kajai, I hope I'm saying that right, Tatsuki Kajai from uh, Japan, from Japan, Japan Photo Finish. Uh, we've got Raphael Kockelman from Luxembourg, he is in there. We've got Kai Davis, who's an under 23 from Finchley Road Cup, he's wearing 36. Cameron Mason, we pointed out, uh, wearing 47 for Trinity Racing. Easy to pick out those Trinity Racing colours. Maximilian Mobus from Germany is there. Uh, Grigory Kalashnikov uh, for our Russian viewers. He is in there as well. He's an under 23. Is Kalashnikov for Francois Chastanier from Anakin uh, Cycling uh, Team from uh, France, as well as uh, Kerry Werner, as we said, from uh, the US. Say the American uh, champion Quentin Herman's leading out from Matthew van der Poel and uh, Jeremy with, a, with just what many names missing today. But again, it's another great opportunity for the likes of Tom Pidcock, who raced really well here last year. He was fourth last year. It just looks as well the last uh, few weeks. He had a great race in the Droven Cross as well last week. Um, He's got, for me, he's not far away. Tom Pickock, we're waiting for that sort of breakthrough victory um, for Pickock. Yeah, I would expect a big ride from him uh, during the Christmas period. I think that there's a good opportunity on a variety of different courses. And of course, one day he's going to kind of hit the uh, the matchup of his skill set and the uh, you know and the legs. So I think that will be, there's a lot of opportunities during this Christmas period as these riders all um, choosing to, uh, to ride this first section. We did catch a glimpse back there as they hopped that concrete barricade of Kerry Werner and Cam Mason. So good to see those riders there in the, uh, well into the top 15, top 20, um, put down some watts out here in St. Nicholas. Dieter Van Toren now going through for a uh, few Pau South Bingo fans. So at the end of a lap one, and you can see we are just about the six minute mark here as uh, Van der Poel goes through from Pidcock. Herman's Meissen moves up, Bob Bossman's does the same, Bastion is there right on the, the back, coattails of that group Jadenic Stibar for you fans is still in there at this stage Van Paul just uh, at the moment we've seen them do this quite a bit so far this season we Jeremy they were just on the opening lap just sits back almost just lulls everyone into a false sense of security lets them uh, use uh, use the energy matches use the beans up and then he just hits them yeah, I mean, he can, you know, he can decide, as you see Meissen taking that lower line there, um, as well as Vanderpoel, Steve Barr, everybody choosing that lower, uh, you know, wider line, and they come into this off-camera section. I think that uh, there isn't the urgency. It's not the World Cup. You know, the, the number World Cup is uh, is going to be a big, hard day for everybody. I think that there's a um, there's an opportunity here to kind of let this race settle out and to get things going. It's fast enough. There's not necessarily the urgency of, uh, of a huge series underway. So it's a good opportunity to kind of get the legs opened up, kick off this Christmas period. But I think everyone's on the same page that they're going to get to the business end of this a little bit later than, um, than right at the start. A couple of riders I missed out. Joe Williams is wearing 14. He's uh, from Astra. He's an under 23. And uh, we mentioned Finn Mansfield. If you want to watch out for Finn Mansfield, he's wearing number 15 in this one. So the group heads mass uh, colours. Bossman has a little glance back over the shoulder just to see um, how that group is looking. Uh, Lander, uh, Lander Locks from Group 
Defense Mass is the other rider that's just on the, the back of this group here. So this uh, leading group being led out by the Corridor Circus rider, the German champion, Marcel Meissen. Locked in ready is uh, Vita Boss was Tom Pidcock. Just have a little look here. Maybe he's going to just try something now. Tom Pidcock early on here to try and split this group a little bit. And uh, for Pidcock, just ups the pace. You can see the acceleration out of uh, that little uh, ditch that they uh, ride through. And then just off the back of that group is Dieter Van Torenham. Rider that we haven't been talking about a lot this year, but it's good to see back up there. Wicha Bozeman is, uh, is riding in his new kit. He pronounced, announced that he had a new team, and uh, uh, Easter X is one of the sponsors there, and he's that rider that looks a little bit like the Bora Hansgro kit at first when I saw it. So I had to uh, put it all together, but that's Wicha Bozeman there sitting in the top three. The big rider was a teammate of Niels Alberts uh, for a long time when the team was BKCP. Unfortunately, uh, King got, got bit by a tick, I believe, and ended up with Lyme disease and has been fighting that for a while, but to look to be here in St. Nicholas, able to uh, able to come back and is having a good run at this one today as Pitcock leads it out here along the water um, on this uh, very unique off-camper section that we've seen have. give trouble to some of the riders. You can see there the, uh, the men also having a hard time with this where we famously watched Sonicon unfortunately uh, go down earlier in the women's race. A few of you just got Matthew Vanderpool just reacts to Vicha Bossman and Tom Pidcock's uh, gap. Vanderpool closes it down, uh, recognizes the danger of letting the British champion go clear. There's uh, Jadenek Stiva. So, just riding and settling into this race. A lot of you asking where Kerry Werner is. You're watching out for the Pan Am uh, champions jersey for the Kona Factory cycling uh, team rider. Yeah, we may catch a shot of him. He was uh, looked to be in around 15th place when we saw him last, uh, when there was a long shot. So maybe we'll see him here as he comes back into the shot on the opposite side of the track. See Pitcock, Bozeman, uh, Matthew Vanderpool, Quentin uh, Hermann, Marcel Meissen, and then Zednik Stibar coming through. Stevie looks to be very, uh, very focused today, Marty. As the pace went up, um, you get to see him. He very much was looking at that, saying, what's going on? You know, he was looking around the other rider. Do I need to react to this? Do I need to burn some matches? or can I stay kind of calm, cool, and collected? Yeah. Now there's a gap from uh, Quinton Hermans uh, back to Marcel Mice and Tom Pidcock is really uh, throwing down the challenge in this race. The Trinity Racing rider, that British champion's jersey. Great to see uh, another nation uh, to the head, of, uh, the head of affairs. We've seen Tom Pidcock over the years as a junior, as an under-23. Now he's really maturing uh, already in the elite class, chose to move up to the elite category uh, this year. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's almost, uh, you've served your apprenticeship, isn't it, as an under-23? And then when you get to the elite, you've then got to take that, that first elite victory and then everything snowballs from there generally, or you hope it does. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, but Pitcock looking good today. We're repping that uh, British National Champs jersey very well this season. Has uh, has come in off that uh, great ride at the World Championships, coming back from an injury that he sustained this summer. Able to put it together and going to use this uh, this block to obviously solidify that British National Champs jersey and to continue to uh, continue to take cyclocross seriously. He's a very unique rider. Had a fantastic ride at the Koppenberg earlier this year. Went head to head with a uh, very on-form Ilya Easter bit and was one of the best races that I've seen in person in a very long time. I, I very much enjoyed watching those two do battle uh, there out, out, out there on the Copperberg. So Bossman's Pitcock, Vanderpool and Hermans go through and the clock starts ticking. We are on lap three. So it's Marcel Meissen, Vinny Bastians and uh, Jadenek Stieber. Jens Adams and Dieter Van Tour now are the next riders uh, to go through. Uh, Dieter Van Toren out, just having a little glance back now over the shoulder. Lander locks not far away. Tom Pitcock nails that section, manages hey. to stay on. Vanderpool again, they just has to kick back. So does Hermans, absolutely smashing it through that section. Is Tom Pitcock? Can he try and ride this whoa. one? That's the whoa, first whoa, rider whoa. that we've seen do that today. And Tom Pitcock, we haven't seen anyone do that over the last couple of seasons on that section. Hey, Marty, that was a phenomenal man. That's like, that's gonna be in the, uh, that's gonna be all over Instagram. No one has been able to do that. That is not something that I thought was possible, uh, but definitely Pitcock using that strength, that power to weight ratio to be able to ride that section. 
definitely woke up some riders behind. That's a big move. Um, Vanderpool not able to ride that section cleanly in the past. Not seen a rider hit those things back to back like that. Uh, Pitcock must be feeling quite sparky today to be able to pull that off. And then to lay this attack down early like this, he's calling those guys out like, hey, you want to match this or you want to, what do you want to do here today? So Vanderpool now taking note, looking, coming past uh, Weecher Boseman's and as well, Paramount saying, hey, I'm here. I want to be on the podium today. Um, definitely everyone's got tomorrow in their mind. It doesn't look like Pitcock really cares. Kaboom, you would say about that section from Tom Pitcock. Absolutely smashes it through that section. Matthew van der Poel reacts. Hermans and Bossmans, you can see that the gap, the attack done by the British champion from Trinity Racing has already opened up this gap. And now it's down to van der Poel. And it's good to see Tom Pitcock just racing like this. As I said, he had a great race here 12 months ago. It was Matthew van der Poel that took the victory with an hour and three minutes of racing. Hermans, Mayusen, Pitcock, Dieter Van Toren out, Nicholas Kleppen, Dan Suter, Marcel Meissen, Dieter Zweig and Victor van der Bosch. That was your top ten. Alongside the lake on the bank now, Pidcock kicks it out of that section as uh, van der Poel reacts. Vietje Bosmans, you can see there, is uh, just uh, starting to lose the wheel now of Quentin uh, Hermans. But Pidcock carrying that power, carrying that speed now. Pidcock and look at Matthew van der Poel out of the saddle as he tries to react to the attack and the challenge here from the young Brit. Man, that is that section. Anytime someone takes that high line there like Vanderpool just did, I start to get a little sketched out on that because it is that pitch of it is just enough, but Vanderpool able to uh, able to finesse the bike through there at high high speed, chasing down uh, chasing down Pitcock, but definitely uh, pit, you know you can see the look on Vanderpool's face, not happy about having to go that deep this early in the race and having to bring that that uh, that gap that Pitcock laid down. That's not going to happen twice, Marty. I do not think you're going to be able to see Pitcock execute that against the world champion again. I think that he's going to say, hey, I'm going to be in the front for that section, or if you're going to do that, I'm going to be right on your wheel to try as well. Put, you've ridden this course many, many times. Put into put your, It's difficult when we're on camera and we're watching it. And uh, if you check out as well, Zoe Baxter did a, a little wander around the course yesterday. Um, search on a little YouTube uh, preview on that. You'll be able to see her walking the course. But generally, to be able to do that section, it's so steep down through that back, isn't it? Impossible <laughs> would be how I would describe that. Uh, yeah, I remember that. But it, it, it been, there's been different variations of that same hillside, uh, but very, very steep. As Pitcock takes a look at his watch there just to see where's my heart rate at, how hard did I have to go here. Um, but yeah, very, very steep. And, uh, you know, I, I'd say that just based on all of the other riders not even really considering being able to ride that as an op as a possibility, um, that tells me everything that I need to know. As Vanderpool tries to come best, but Pitcock says no not right now i'm going to continue to hold the lead of this i'm going to be up front and vanderpool says all right that's cool i'm going to let you uh, i'll let you do your thing here i'm going to go a little harder i think some of these riders are looking at i'm only going to go as hard as i need to because tomorrow's world cup is one of the most challenging most difficult um you know that it, tomorrow's world cup takes a uh, a part of your soul <laughs> away from you every time you do it it is such a hard race that i think that the uh that looking at today's track here they're saying i'm only going to do the, the bare minimum in order to be able to be at the front of this race but pitcock is not uh, is not concerned because i think tomorrow's track in namur is a good course for him and he's going to have a lot of a uh, lot of ambition in that one just warming up those legs as well you, when you've got that big ob objective you've got to you've just got to get into the into the race do what you can and let's a nice close-up shot there nice little low shot here of the sand through there and i think tom's gonna oh i was just i'm not gonna say it because i was just about to say tom will, will probably be mindful of what happened to him in zonhoven and uh, i just stuck yep. the needle in the voodoo doll there didn't it i'll uh, i'll get my feng shui man in the in the in the, the gcn studio i don't want to curse him that's right. I mean, anytime they're riding with Vanderpool, I think is a good day. You know, Vanderpool definitely it looks to be less um, less focused on on blowing this race apart early on. I think he's he's gonna play this one late. It looks like, um, but definitely still wants to be in the front of this section because that wasn't. Uh, I don't think he enjoyed that move from Pidcock up one upping him. So now be interesting to see if Vanderpool tries not only to ride this section but also what his strategy is gonna be for the end of this race.
There's your leading group. Beecher Bossman's here on the back right. Best ride we've seen from him for a while. As you said, Jeremy, new sponsor. There's Vinny Bastian's going through lap four of 11. When we think back to last week, we had, what, six laps? Something like that last week. It was so brutal. Uh, Tom Pidcock kicking on at the front here. You can see the new sponsors, the Easter eggs on the Stevens bikes. Beecher Bossman's. Will Tom Pidcock manage to ride this section again? He does. Pidcock has gone on again. Vanderpool has a little sprint on the top of that one. That is a gauntlet thrown down with some weight. Two laps in a row from the British champion. As Jeremy said, using that power to weight ratio drops down to the bottom of that uh, bank section and kicks it out of the turn. That is, uh, Jeremy, that is a course preview. That is looking at your tire pressures and the tire choice, isn't it, to have the track to be able to kick it out of that section. Yeah, and you can see the momentum and the uh, the, the the drive that uh, Pitcock has right now. He's just so so pumped to be able to ride that section to be able to open these gaps. You know, Ermans and um, and Boschman's not really not that they're not able to. Uh, to react to it, they're able to react, but they're having to react every six minutes now to that attack. I mean, that is that is a feather in his cap. Everybody at in the pro men's in the front is able to jump these barricades and able to navigate these off-camera sections, but not everybody took a hard look at that line that Pitcock definitely saw in, uh, during his pre-ride and said, "Hey, this is an opportunity, and I'm going to try to take this moment on." So yeah, it's been great. It's great to see him kind of uh, throwing that at these riders and these guys having to react. Vanderpool not giving much uh, much space there after last lap using his experience to know, hey, I don't want to close that gap down again, so I'm going to come into this right on your wheel so that I don't have to lose any uh, any time to you. So, yeah, but good on him. And um, it'll be interesting, Marty, to see if Pitcock's able to do that lap after lap because it's such a low cadence, big strength effort. If he's able to do that lap after lap, that's going to it's it's going to be a hard effort to keep up. That's, that's, that's my opinion of it. There's your uh, top four, Pidcock, Vanderpool, Hermans, and Bosman's. Pidcock looks like he's just throttling back, just a touch. Then behind there, you've got Jens Adams and Marcel Meissen is the next group uh, going through. And then you've got that little gap back to the likes of uh, Jadenek Stieber. Bossman's on the back. I love the beautiful uh, kind of iridescent purple paint job that uh, Beach the Bossman's got on that bike. It's a thing of beauty there. There's yeah, Cameron Mason cool. just going down the left there as well. Just point him out for you. As we say, there's this group of four riders. Yep, four riders here. Matthew Vanderpoel. Uh, we've got uh, Weecha Bosman's on the back there. Quentin Hermans and Tom Pidcock up in the front group here as they come through on this very fast track here in St. Nicholas, kicking off the uh, cursed period, the Christmas period uh, here in Belgium. And as the riders make their way over tomorrow to the Mer. It's Vinny Bastian that's with Jens Adams. Then you've got Marcel Meisen and Jadenik Stiebar. They will be uh, chasing to try and get back into this group. Tom Pidcock looked like he definitely put this group in a bit of a box with that with that attack. Yeah, I think everyone's kind of just taking a moment to uh, check up. <laughs> Fast course, you know, not a lot of uh, not a lot of opportunity. Vanderpool made uh, made quick work of it, though. Did not let the gap grow. Did not take. Uh, did not let make anyone else do the, the pace setting. He just jumped right to the front, took that gap back. Although had to had to burn some matches to do it. Um, just didn't want to let Pitcock have a long leash there. Jens Adams, Vinny Bastian, then here's Marcel Meissen and Jadenek Stieber. It's 11 laps of racing you're going to have uh, today. They've uh, already put that one up. The calculation is made. It's a quartet. Good to see Bossman's back at this uh, level as well. This is the uh, best performance we've seen this early in a race from uh, Vix Bossman. We've seen him kind of riding in sort of plain kit over the last couple of seasons you said he had some health problems jeremy the the motivation just finding that new team finding those new sponsors and and then it just gives you that extra level of i need to deliver now exactly yeah i think uh i think yeah i was talking to him he's uh he does live in the area um he lives in the area near uh spend nice and i was talking to him a little bit about it and we were saying that it's been very hard for him to make come back to, to full form 
Um, but like I said, teammates with Niels Albert, I actually shared the podium with uh, with Weechi Postman um, at a race the weekend before the World Championships. He and Niels Albert and uh, quite a few of the European riders had come over. And um, yeah, he's a big he's a big rider. You, know, you can just see the, the the size of his frame compared to the other riders. He's not a small guy, so on a course like this, he does very well. He's got a lot of power, able to push a big gear. And um, yeah, I mean, I give him a lot of credit for being able to uh, to uh, to stick in it as long as he has with the health problems. But you see now Vanderpool deciding here four with four of eleven laps. He needs to do his uh, he needs to do his work. He's going to lay down an attack. So he felt clean through that sand section, and now it looks like it's Quentin Adamans that's going to be taking up the chase, and trying to pin this one back together. It was Hermans who saw, came to a halt and uh, Pitcock and Bossman's behind. Vanderpool, well, this is take, have a little through, look through that section. You see Hermans dabs the foot, can't keep the momentum. Pitcock behind him. Vanderpool goes up the, the ramp and then on to the finishing straight and has a little look back. And now the world champion goes on the attack. And we saw it uh, in Zonhoven when Tonarts uh, kicked on, when Tom Pitcock did the same in the sand. Vanderpool. Paul takes the line that Pidcock does and manages to ride that section. Does the Trinity Racing rider do the same? Yes, he does as Hermans and Bossmans are sprinting to stay with them behind Van der Poel. He just uh, takes the lead from, uh, Matt, from Tom Pidcock and uh, manages to ride that section. I feel like Vanderpool always the kid, you know, decides, oh, oh, you want to, I want to one up you, you one up me, I'm going to try to, you know, I'm going to try to match you. So it comes into this second, comes into this section, as you see there, Vanderpool's dad now, Audrey Vanderpool, being interviewed by, uh, by Sforza. So yeah, definitely, that was, that was one on one Vanderpool. Like, I have to try this section, and I'm going to, you threw that at me, I'm going to come back and try to throw it at you now. Opens up that gap after he hears Quentin Hermans having trouble in the, um, having trouble in the sand pit, hears that there's a problem, goes in the attack, and then doubles down by being able to ride those sections that Pitcock was only able to ride previously. Just someone who's asking on the front here, it's Vincent Bastions. Uh, Jeremy knows him well, and uh, they call him Vinny, uh, don't they? Vinny Bastions, that's, uh, but not Billy ba uh, Bastions, that's uh, there. Just a little shout out, Scott Larson, so thanks for checking in, Darren Howard, um, David Navarro from uh, Spain, thanks for uh, saying hi, and uh, uh, the, as we say, yeah, just one small mistake from someone behind. But Tom Pidcock and Quinton Hermans here pressing on, trying to get back up to Matthew Vanderpool. And it's the elite women's race. Don't worry, we won't give you any spoilers, but anything is anything to go by. Uh, they can still potentially, can they get back to Matthew Vanderpool? You just saw as he went up that ramp on to the straight, had a glance back. That is the gap that shows you in uh, elite professional cycle across how one small error can creep in and Matthew van der Poel goes into full power mode and now on this section and already lapping riders ahead of him. Yeah, someone could have had a problem, a flat tire, a busted chain, but uh, definitely not going to be wanting to get in the way of Pitcock. No problem for him. He's going to shoot right past this rider. That rider is going to go into the left. But yeah, trying to pin this up as van der Poel digs um, on such a fast horse, Marty. There's not a lot of places to be able to get that, get that that time back so Pitcock not wanting to let that gap go because it's clear that he wants to get a result here today probably does better after multiple days of riding you know some riders when they're very fit big athletes they're able to do days and days and days of racing and come out of it with a uh, with a lot more form than they went into it with other riders you know they are more of a one-day rider you know they don't train as hard they're not able to take on that load they typically they can change their race a little bit more someone like Vanderpool, Pitcock, Pitcock, they're all riders who are day to day we're going to treat this upcoming two weeks like a big stage race, uh, but a second cross stage race. It is indeed. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll just check with uh, Johnny B on the Jeremy's audio. I think we're having a little bit of underwater on that one. Rob Kennison, thanks for uh, checking in as well. Van der Poel, though, he's got uh, a challenge here. Can Tom Pickock and uh, Quentin uh, Spearman get back up to him onto this uh, off camber section? And Van der Poel from Corridor Circus pressing on here. If uh, he's really uh, have got a race 
today if they want to challenge him we saw it early on in this one and we've seen it uh, over the last few weeks early on in the races van der Poel just kind of kicking back a little bit at the beginning of the races over this big concrete section carries that speed so do uh, Pitcock and Hermans Hermans just riding out the last uh, few weeks of his racing little uh, slow-mo as uh, Stiebar just Columbus cl it looks like he clipped the back wheel there of uh, Marcel Meissen alongside the lake now. Van der Poel, the gap is holding uh, fast. And uh, this section, can uh, these two riders get back on if they do? Well, uh, Van der Poel, we might just see him just kick back a little bit. But uh, this is the section he's got absolutely dialed in. Pidcock doesn't want anyone in front of him. He wants to be able to kick through this section and he manages to do it this time. So does Quentin Herrmanns. Uh, and they're coming around to the end of uh, lap five of 11 now. Van der Poel, Pidcock's looking for some work now from Quentin Hermans nods him in to the lead. Van der Poel's going to go through just under 28 minutes of uh, racing so far. So it goes through there about 27.53 is the lap time. Hermans has uh, got some work to do, but that attack early on in the, this race from Tom Pidcock definitely hurt a lot of riders in uh, this front group. This is quick. Here's Vitsa Bossman's uh, going uh, through the line. And uh, the gap now opening up 20 seconds back to Bossman's. Absolutely. Yeah, they're going for it for sure, Marty. They got a. Uh, they definitely have got this course locked and loaded. They know all of the good lines now. They're riding the sand section almost flawlessly. There's not really a lot of having to get off the bike, although you see Vanderbilt here having to get off on that section, deciding that it wasn't worth it for his legs to put in that big effort. Pitcock also saying, hey, this is we're going too hard now. Everybody's everybody's on, on the gas. They're really, really pushing the pace. So doing a huge effort like that was possible before when they weren't going 110%. Now that everybody's going at their limit, it's not really possible to put in that huge effort because their heart rate's already much, much too high as they come into it. As we see uh, Weecha Boseman's here coming into that off-camera section, trotting up this section, going to be happy with his ride so far here today. Not managing to get back on. We saw this uh, a few weeks ago as well with Laurel Swake, though, didn't we, Jeremy, that... that Right, he was sitting two seconds off the back of Matthew Van der Poel at a point and he still didn't get on to him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Van der Poel's not going to take the bit out of his teeth. He's going to keep pushing, going to keep pushing, going to keep pushing until he gets the gap that he wants, you know what I mean? He's able to put these sections together. He's able to put a lot of pressure on the pedals. We've seen that from him in the past. Um, and he's able to technically ride as well as anyone. So, you know, uh, someone like Pidcock able to ride those sections. Van der Poel sees the opportunity and then decides, hey, I'm going to try that now and I'm going to put this section together so yeah the world champ is the world champ for a reason he's got great legs on the day and he's riding this race from the front like he likes to he's trying to build up a nice gap so that he can um, have a little bit of a uh, little bit of a relaxing um, last half of this race as D tries to uh, get ready for this big Christmas period is indeed and talking of that put some dates in your diary we do have the uh, UCI World Cup from Namur tomorrow to limited territory so check your territories and I have a quite limited on the world World Cup at the moment. Remember, if you keep watching, keep spreading the news, let everyone know that we're here. Hopefully, we'll be able to build on races, build on territories, and that kind of thing for the future. World Cup from Houston, Zolder on the, on the uh, 26th of December. Boxing Day will be here again. Limited territories on that. 27th DBB trophy to, in Lohenhout. Uh, that uh, should be. Um, hopefully, the return of Pauw van Aert uh, in that one. That's DBB trophy is live worldwide, just excluding Belgium and uh, the Netherlands. We're then to uh, Deegan for the night race. That's uh, 16.50 UK time and that's 15.50 in uh, uh, Europe for that one. So there's Super Prestige from Deegan. The night race on the 29th. We're back on the 30th for the Etias on Dinner, and then we go the 1st of January, New Year's Day, the GP Spend Nace in Bath. So make sure you subscribe, hit your bell icon and uh, hit your uh, reminders so that you know um, exactly when all of the races are uh, going live. Hermans and Pitcock right here uh, to try and get back. Van der Poel, though, after that attack. He uh, can just glance back here, can't he, Jeremy, on these uh, hot dog sections and just see where his rivals are. And you can just keep just opening the gas, just opening the pressure each, uh, each time just to see, just to hold that gap. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's just a very electric. You know, he's very sharp in the pedals. I think he's done a big. Uh, we had heard he had done a very big training block uh, just before last weekend, uh, before he had lost that race. Unfortunately, he had done a huge block. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for those blocks to settle into the legs. You go away in a training camp, um, you come back, and then you've got some interval work after some very long periods, um, just to kind of get the muscle memory and to get the body back into shape after a long period of racing without a lot of ability to do long days when you race back to back on the weekends you know you have to uh, you have to take rest during the week so uh even for someone like vanderpool i'm sure that he can't train four days out of the week he needs to take an extended block to go out and do some good training we'd heard he was doing very large weeks um, someone even had mentioned to me potentially a 40-hour week in there um which sounds crazy to me i don't know how that's possible but <laughs> for the world champ uh, i'll say yes it's possible um but you know i think that uh have yet to let that settle in you know you don't do a stage race and then be good the next day it's a week or you know a little bit after that that you start to feel the effects of doing all that hard training and um vanderpool's no different in that regard yeah matt uh Magnus was talking about uh, a 40-hour week. That's uh, Joe Williams from Asma Flanders. He's just getting uh, uh, lapped there by Matthew Vanderpool. Edmonds and Pitcock. Pitcock keeps trying to get past here, but they're not uh, allowing... Uh, he's, uh, Hermans is not letting the British champion through that sand section. They have uh, definitely got dialed in here. You can see how quickly we are lapping at the end of sack lap six of 11 here, just over 30 minutes minutes of uh, 33 minutes of uh, racing Vanderpool leads through let's have a look at the time gap back to the chasing uh, duo behind They've given us three so far can they find their way back here look to going through there so it's about 15 seconds they're not stopping the clock on uh, a monster ride again from uh, the world champion Nicely through there. Yeah, but choosing again not to put that big effort in on those legs, and I I, uh, I give him credit for that because that's one of those ones that's like doing a bench press every lap with your legs. You know what I mean? This one you can take a lot of speed and momentum into it, but this other one is so steep. You guys got to think these are the best riders in the world. So if they're going to come into this, Pickock looks like he's going to try. It. Nope, deciding. You know what? Not going to do it this time. Hits one of the wrong holes. That's just a. Uh, that's just unfortunately not a great use of judgment. Right? You gotta. You gotta know. Hey, I want to keep my momentum. Obviously for quick time. he tried didn't happen you know what he's probably not going to try again after that he's going to say you know what i know that this isn't as possible my legs aren't as fresh I, I splashed my card out there but i wasn't able to do it um he's gonna he's gonna know um whether there's enough speed and momentum and power in the legs to be able to do it but sometimes buddy you just gotta try indeed the gap is uh, growing quentin harriman's has had a great season so far, Pitcock is as well. The, uh, the driving cross last uh, weekend. And, uh, good to get a second place in uh, that one in Overreiter. Of course, they have the, uh, the Overreiter Classic in the season. It was this order in last week's uh, race in Overreiter. It was uh, Matthew Van der Poel 14 seconds ahead of Tom Pitcock with Quentin Hermans at 20. That was last uh, Sunday, so the end of that winning streak for Vanderpool. Pressure off, time to start building the next one. 400 days he went uh, without being beaten, and now he has uh, started again. He does look extra fit, I have to say. Um, just looking at kind of the, he got a little bit tan. He's got a good, he's got good form on the bike. He looks strong. He looks very fit. Like I just, uh, same with Sonicot, you know, some of the riders, they probably have just stayed the same throughout the year. No big changes after a large training camp. But I have to say that it looks like those long hours have done Vanderpool well. He just looks very comfortable on the machine, and he looks to be in control of his uh, of his effort here in a way that I think is a, uh, you know, I think when he came into the to the season, Marty, he was uh, well, at least the way I saw it was he had to take a big break after the after the road and everything that kind of went on for his year. He needed to make sure that he was set up for his cross season, but there wasn't a lot of time to train beforehand. So he used the races as some training, but necessarily was pushed by you know the the Belgians in particular. 
Lauren Swig and Ely Easterby uh, at the Euros. So he's come into this. He's been able to finally put a big block of training underneath him now um, down in Spain with his teammates. And he's able to uh, he's able to rest a little bit, do some interval work. And now he's able to come back into this um, race here and, and use that form to uh, to come into the to the, uh, the big block of racing that they have coming up. Looks like we've uh, got an issue here for uh, Noah Vrieswijk, uh, the junior rider from uh, Sommerun. So, uh, just uh, having a glance down at the bike. These two, though, want to uh, keep uh, pressing on here. The, uh, the gap at uh, this stage, Jeremy, if, uh, if, if Matthew has any kind of uh, mecha mechanical issues or uh, any, uh, any kind of... It doesn't, norm, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make many mistakes in, uh, in cyclocross, Matthew Van der but uh, it can allow these two riders uh, to come back in. We live in hope. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know this is the fast sport. So, like I said before, you know the um, the ability to crash is there. There's no question about it. As we see, we chip most of there coming into the barriers, jumping those. But yeah, when you go down on this track, it's not fun because it is it's such a fast sport. There's uh, so much high speed, off camber turns, and um, unique little little kind of quick chicanes and things like that. It really does change. Um, does change. You know, if you if you eat it here, it's not like eating in the big wide open. You know, kind of stop. Field. It, it hurts a little bit more, but you see Vanderpool, nice shot of him just kind of tucked down, stay a little bit arrow as he goes and uses that outside part of the, uh, the lake there for the most um, firm part of the sand along the water. It's when you look at Matthew Vanderpool now on the bike, when you look at the position that he rides cross in, which is pretty much a carbon stamp out of his road position. As he comes onto the uh, road this time, he's going to go on to lap 8 of 11. But it's quite interesting to look at the comparison between someone like him and someone like Tone Arts, who rides a very sort of traditional cross position for someone his height, a lot shorter, a lot sort of higher up in the way he rides. Matthew just rides basically uh, as aero as he does on the road. Yeah, I think Van, uh, Vanderpool and Wout Benner all have very long positions. It's something that Niels Elber also tended to do a little bit. Um, you know, they're a little bit more forward. Uh, some of the riders are a little bit more forward with their saddles, um, You know, kind of going more for like a time trial position. But as soon as you scooch forward, you start to lose a little bit of your handling ability. Vanderpool's proportions on his body style are so great that he's able to push a lot of power because he's got these long femurs. Um, they keep the saddle back. He's got really long arms. And so that combination as a cyclocross rider, I think, really suit, um, suits him well to be able to kind of navigate, to keep a lot of pressure on the front tire when he needs it, but also to shift his body weight around. Having that longer um, that longer wheelbase on the bike, being a bigger bike, being able to shift that weight easily uh, really benefits him. And it's why, and one of the things that makes him such a great rider for the years, there's someone smaller, Sven Nice, you know, someone this smaller, like we're seeing here with Hermans and uh, Tom Pitcock, they have a different thing that they're able to do. They're able to stay lower to the ground. They're able to navigate, you know, dice left and right, um, sit in those ruts a little easier. Someone like Vanderbilt definitely uh, has used the the uh, the body that he was given to to the absolute maximum and made it a uh, not a disadvantage, but a big advantage. When you look, talking of body shape, you look at Vanderbilt, you look at Pitcock, then you look at uh, Vita Boschmans, that you couldn't get three more different people, could you? No, uh, you know, Boschman has always been a big rider. He's a, uh, he's very muscular. He's got a lot of, um, he's got a lot of uh, like mass on him, you know, which is good. Um, you know, when you're not a bike racer, you pick up logs, do things. <laughs> so, so that's good um, when you need those. But, uh, but as a bike racer, you know, the only time that that's going to really bite you is on those hilly tracks. You know, carrying that extra mass up those climbs, unless you push a really big gear, it's going to be hard. So. Um, yeah, I think on a track like here today, we're seeing a really good ride from him. You know, able to be up in that top five, fourth place currently. Uh, that's This is a good course for him. Fairly flat, not a lot of big, long climbs. He's able to use that power to his advantage and um, and really showcase him and his new team. Just run through. So, so far, Vanderpool, Pitcock, Hermans, that's your uh, top three. So, Vanderpool on his own. Pitcock and Hermans, the chasing group behind. Then, uh, Victor Bosmans is just over the 43, 44 seconds. Then, we had Jadenek, uh, Steve going through on his own, just ahead of Jens Adams and Marcel Meissen. That is your top uh, seven. And then uh, we haven't seen the eight, nine, and ten go uh, across the line uh, as of yet. So the uh, director just focusing.
going on uh, the front rider here. Uh, Matthew Van der Poel along uh, that section. And, uh, in terms of uh, not many bikes, the, the mechanics are having a day off today, aren't they? <laughs> Almost. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice, I mean, yeah, we're thinking about the World Cup tomorrow, though that'll be a welcome change. You know, if there's a, if there is a problem, like that rider that we saw with that rolled tubular. Ooh, you see there, Hermann, that is that section, Marty, that I just, I just don't like that high line, you know? Even for the big riders, even for the riders that have great finesse and know their stuff, that is just, that's one of those ones that just can take you out. It's, uh, it's slimy and greasy up top, and then you're just coming down, but... Yeah, getting back to the mechanics, it's, a, uh, it's nice to be able to take the day and kind of relax because tomorrow in Namur, for sure, that will not be the case. Hermans and Pidcock, you can see all the time when the uh, camera goes back, the, uh, these two riders pressing to try and uh, every time Tom Pidcock tries to come through, Vanderpool, you can see again, carries that speed uh, as always. This is what, again, what's changed over the last decade, you would say, is the speed now that people approach the planks. They're just, there's just no hesitation at all from, from riders now. They're almost as if they're not there anymore. Yeah, as we see, we a good shout out Weecha Boseman's there. Um, yeah, I mean, that was one of the things that I noticed. I think it was 2015, I came into the planks. I've said this on one of the broadcasts before with uh, with uh, Matthew, and we were at the Iowa World Cup, uh, came into the planks, and he jumped the foot five seconds into me. And I was like, okay. Uh, so that's, so now I know at least where five of those seconds every lap goes. So now I need to work from there. And I always have prided myself on being a decent uh, a decent bunny hopper able to jump the planks but um, not as fast as the new generation so you know it's uh someone like Sven nice was able to kind of refine his style to get faster to get more uh, to get better and was always was always one of the best bunny hoppers of my generation that i watched and kind of tried to emulate i was bunny hopping early on i love to jump things but not necessarily as fast There's a lot of different styles and techniques to being able to jump barriers so um, the style that's going on right now is fast. That's the, that's the only thing you need to think about. As we see here, Stebar uh, coming through, and yeah, I uh, I'd say I give Stebar a lot of credit for making this uh, for making this a bigger part of his season this year. He's talking about Sven Nice. I remember when when he was saying that. Uh, that it was important as he got older. Stevie's now 34. Um, I think he was born in 1984, if I remember correctly, because he was racing with me. So I'm from 83, <laughs> maybe it's 85, somewhere in there. Anyways, um, talking about their birth year. So I, okay, so from 1985. As you get older, 34 years old, you need to uh, you need to keep up. You need to keep the level high. You can't take these huge breaks and um, and start to kind of really decompress. You need to have a good level and you need to stay fit because it takes a lot longer to get back up to. The, to the highest rung of uh, professional cycling. Looks like those two have now resigned themselves to a chase for the podium. Uh, Hermans and uh, Pitcock, there's Beach of Osman's great day that he is uh, having today. Big man there from uh, Easter X. The gap now goes out to almost 30 seconds as they go through the line. I would make that about 29 seconds lap. Eight of 11. If you are just getting on board today, welcome. This is the Rector of its series round three uh, the buffalo cross from st nicholas uh, martin mcdonald jeremy powers are with you again today to start with a very busy uh, race uh, time the history of this race when you go for it back in 2009 francis Moray is one here no race in 2011 it's been nice uh, Niels Albert, Matthew Van der Poel in 2014. Van der Poel got, uh, was second to Niels Albert in 2013. As he says, this race holds a very special place in his heart. He was uh, second by millimeters to Niels Albert on that occasion. Laurent Swake in 2015, Tom Neusen in 2016, Wout Van Aert in 2017, and Matthew Van der Poel in 2018. That is the roll call of honor uh, in this race. Uh, the, uh, it looked early on, right up until that moment, Jeremy, where uh, Herrmann's got delayed that uh, this one, it wasn't going to be a day for Van der Poel to ride away, but uh, he just can do no wrong. He can't. No, he's on a uh, he's on a good bit of uh, he's on a good bit here today, and he's definitely decided that he wanted to kind of get out of trouble, um, ride his own pace, and use today as a uh, as an opener up for tomorrow's race in Namur at the World Cup. Uh, you know, we've seen this from Vanderpool a lot. He's got he's got a lot of power. He's got a uh, he wants to ride these races safe. He wants to win. You know, Marty. He races to win, and he's not really happy unless he does. 
So this is going to be a good um, a good thing. I don't think he's under pressure right now, and I don't think the riders behind are pushing him uh, nearly as hard as he has been pushed in the past by the other Belgians. So he's going to take a lot of uh, confidence away from his efforts out here today. They are indeed now onto this power, good power section. He'll drop down onto the uh, along the side of the water here. Presses on good uh, close up shot here of the uh, of the gearing of, of Matthew Vanderpool as well. Not surprised to see him in the big ring down low. You can just kind of get a sense of how fast this track is by the gear that he's pushing and how fast he's going. You know, if you think if you took your bike out and you put it in the 46, or I believe he's probably riding something around a 46, and then you put it down mid to low part of the cassette, that's how fast they're going. If you're an uh, avid cyclist, then you know he's going pretty quick on an off camber, slimy, uh, muddy section. So, yeah, it almost looks like this is, uh, you know, primed golf grass, but I've had. I personally had some uh, some good crashes here. It's been really, really fast track and very, very slick on top as uh, Weecha Bosmans goes through this little, um, you know, single track section. Right as I said it, unfortunately, yeah, gotta uh, just gotta slide out of the rear wheel there. Smoking hot, you would say, in there for Weecha Bosmans into that uh, section. Uh, Vanderpool lines up for the barriers. Hops those planks. Did you ever ride the triple planks, Jeremy? Back in the day, yes, as we see here, Boseman's a little bit crossed up, just kind of didn't have that rear wheel fully planted down, and um, it just has a little bit of a problem there with the slide out. But yes, I did have the uh, I did have the triple threat, as we used to call it, uh, with the wood chips in the middle. Um, so I, I, how could I how could I forget those three up planks? <laughs> I've seen a few videos recently of them, so uh, no, I'm not sure they're allowed in the are they allowed in the rules anymore? They are not allowed in the rules any longer, no. So no more three-up planks, just two um, UCIs now required them. I think we do see them a little bit in some of the amateur racing here in the States, but generally speaking, um, it's mostly two-up planks nowadays. The battle for second place, Quentin Harriman's Tom Pidcock. It's, uh, the world champion ahead of the Namur World Cup tomorrow. A lot of changes to that course as well. Over the Becker, they found a new, uh, a new cobble or They've introduced a cobble climb into Namur tomorrow. As Bosman's uh, goes through that section, just uh, getting himself uh, ready tomorrow. The likes of uh, Tone Arts and Ellie is a bit. We're watching this one with some interest today. Yeah, for sure. I, they, just a preview of what's to come. I think Vanderpool is looking at this Christmas period as a big opportunity to be able to kind of put his stamp on this. But I'm very excited for all of the racing that's coming up. This is just a very, very small preview into what we're going to be seeing uh, as we get into these World Cups um, back to back here coming up and um, and some of the great uh, series races and some of the classics of the series. You know, I think about uh, about Degum and um, about uh, Isaac Cross and Lowen how some of my favorite races, GP Sven Nisa, uh, there um, at Sven Nisa's uh, Cycling Center in Ball. Those are also the best races of the year, Marty, so I'm very much looking forward to watching those and uh, being a part of them here on GCN Racing. Yeah, big time coming up. Uh, Hermans and Pitcock. Hermans throws a, a little attack in now. Pitcock's got some work to do. Hermans swings across to the right-hand side of the road, out of that section, takes a little glance back over the shoulder. The gap last lap was about 29 seconds, and they managed to extend it. The world champion pressing on here at the head of the race. It drops down into this bank. This is where Tom Pitcock led out early on, and now just keeping the power back in reserve. Hermans takes a glance over the right shoulder just to see where Pidcock is. Uh, Bossman, uh, this is the best, uh, I think the best ride we've seen on our screens for some time from, from Vita Bossman. It's really, really, really good to see. Absolutely. You know, anytime you got a rider coming back from an injury or an illness, uh, it's always fantastic to watch them come back into the fold. Bosman's here, seizing the opportunity, riding with the front riders for a long time. But now it's Quinton Hermans trying to uh, throw, throw it at... Uh, Tom Pickock, Pickock not having any of that is uh, is sticking to his wheel like glue, um, saying, hey, is this what you got? I want to see uh, maybe even a follow-up from Pickock. Pickock definitely wants to be uh, on the podium here today, if not taking that second spot on the podium. Yeah, indeed, this is a great battle between these two. This is your leader, though, Matthew Van der Poel. Uh, John, John Dack is just asking why are the dribble barriers not used anymore. Probably health and safety now, isn't it? Someone did a, someone did a, a, a health and safety report on, uh, on that one and uh, decided, uh, decided no. Yeah, I think uh, I think that it just is one of those 
uh, one of those things that they just it's too long running with the bike. You know, it's not it's not necessary. Um, but maybe they do come back in. You know, I think for every for every no that the UCI gives, there is also an opportunity to say yes. So, but Herbon still turning the screws here on Tom Peacock, trying to get away from trying to get away from him and kind of get a, a get a good gap here in the last 15 minutes of this race as these riders go through about uh, three fourths of the way through this one here in Saint Nicholas. Jdenic Diba and Jens Adams, they're the uh, next battle behind lap 10 of 11 we are on now. So Jdenic Diba, for all of you uh, fans of the De Koenig quick step rider, got a great start. Jdenic uh, Diba, the uh, five times world champion of course, was world champion as an under 23 as well as an elite. So Hammonds is just starting to press the gap now to Tom Pidcock for Pidcock. You'd think that as well, Jeremy, the, the, the course tomorrow in uh, Namur is, is one that, with, with all of its climbing, is, is one that would suit the, the British champion. Definitely. That's why I think today was a big ride for him. I think he wanted to open the legs up and to uh, get things going. He's definitely one of those riders that I said, you know, I think he can take on the day-to-day -day load, and I think it will help him and benefit him to be strong, um, to ride a strong race today. As we see this technical section right here, this slimy off-camber. Um, that's been given a lot of riders trouble. Pitcock um, and Quinton Hermans able to take that with ease. So, yeah, I do think that uh, tomorrow's a big day. You know, I think that these riders will all be looking forward to throwing down 100%, not going to burn up the whole pack of matches, just going to get nice and opened up and, um, and, do, and do good work here, hop on the podium, and then make their way down not far to the uh, French, French side of... Um, Nemur at the Citadel. So that would be a great, uh, a great race to be able to watch. Um, as we see here, the world champion at the on this nice uh, wooded section here. It was a race that I went over for last year. I went from this one and I went drove down to Namur, and then it was a great, uh, a great day out. It was a very wet day. Uh, Hermans and Pidcock, Pidcock. Uh, it's called Joy. Get back here to Quentin Hermans. That second spot on uh, the podium. So that mistake by Hermans on the sand just before the start finish straight. The world champion didn't need a second invitation when uh, Hermans threw the doors open wide. Van der Poel went through and attacked. And as Hermans presses on for Telenet Bauer's Lions heading over to the Wanting Group Go Bear team next year. Great to see that uh, team adding some cyclocross talent uh, into their ranks as well. A lot of teams. Now looking at it after this man and Wapanar Timbalu having such great success on uh, the road. Just adding in some more cyclocross uh, talent into their ranks, meaning that they can give their sponsors exposure 12 months of the year. And we'll just hop through that section, kicks it up this little ramp. The camera uh, uh, doing a great job there, getting that nice low shot. There's Kerry Werner, the, uh, the Pan American champion. Champion uh, clearly just being pulled out on the 80% uh, rule. It's uh, across to the side. Yeah, definitely tough to be able to come over there. Probably using this race a little bit as a uh, as an opener uh, for tomorrow's race uh, in Humor. Maybe also uh, with. Uh, with so much travel, you know, just those riders have just uh, flown from the western part of the United States uh, where the national championships were being held. And we saw Kerry up in the front and flying all the way pretty much across the world, um, about as long as you can go. Um, you know, that must have been a 15-hour flight um, and an even longer day of travel to be able to get over there, just arriving probably on Tuesday or Wednesday, and then lining up here on a Saturday. Never an easy task, so be good to blow the cobwebs out, get going for, uh, for the race that's tomorrow and upcoming. I'm certain that the results will come for Kerry as he gets ready for this, uh, for this big block of racing. Yeah, they normally say an hour, uh, one day per hour of time change for the jet lag. Tom Pidcock gets the bell, goes through. What a great day out again for the British champion. As as well for this man who's currently sitting in fourth place. The, uh, is Victor Boschman uh, riding for the Easter X cycling team. You can see Easter X on his jersey. They also sponsor, uh, sponsor of course, the Tata Leto team. And they've also got uh, another women's road team as well. Our uh, Easter X multiple uh, teams for those sponsors.
What a day out again for this man. It is, it's just, when you look at, at the technique and the style of, of Matthew Van der Poel, it's, 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 just, it's just fluidity and poetry and motion at its finest. Yeah, he's been doing great. I mean, the, you know, he's, he definitely has everything going. Uh, you know, everything looks super pro. He's got the white shoes, the white helmet, the glasses matching the gold bands. Uh, yeah, he definitely, he looks the part. He, he takes being the world champion very seriously. He's put on a show week in and week out, and he's putting another one on here today in St. Nicholas as he kind of goes from four or five laps in, decides that he's going to open up a gap. It was a couple strikes of the pedal stroke, and, um, you know, he just, excuse me, strikes of the pedals, and and, um, yeah, and then he's off on his own and able to uh, to stick this one here today. And yeah, good challenge from uh, from Quinton Hermans and Thomas Pitcock. But I have to say that I think that uh, that tomorrow is the day that everybody is looking forward to uh, kicking off this period. Tom Pitcock coming back into the cross season. Of course, had that big crash in the Tour de l'Avenir, went into the Worlds, maybe a little bit um, under form now, under race, just uh, was up there in uh, that breakaway group in the World Championships. He's also, uh, he's just gradually grown and uh, built that form over the course of the cross season since he came back into racing, the young Brett. So this man here is trying to come back uh, after that big block of uh, training down in Spain if he wants the classics uh, early on in the year and then focus on that uh, Olympic mountain bike title that's the one that he wants next year that's a big focus for this man it's quite a juggling act uh, Jeremy to just sort of get everything in place get that endurance that he's going to need for those long classics in excess of 200 kilometers um, he's got you know he's got a, it's, a, it's, gonna, it's quite a juggling uh, act in terms of the training that he needs to obtain all those objectives next year yeah it's hard to know where his limit is uh, so we'll, we'll, we will find that out in the coming years what his ambitions are on the road and what he's able to do or not do um, you know if that the uh, uh, world championship road race that happened in the UK had been you know had been just a little shorter we may have uh, we may have seen him take those rainbow bands over there but it wasn't meant to be with that long race in the cold weather um, finally just the wheels fell off for Vanderpool which we don't see happen very often but it did on that day so yeah we don't really know and I have said that before uh, he doesn't maybe even know what he's capable of you know a grand tour um, I know they were talking about potentially doing the Vuelta although that looks like that's been scrapped um, there are some uh, there's going to be opportunities opportunities after the Olympics for sure for Vanderpool and if not uh, if he decides to just you know take it a little easier and um and to kind of come into the cross season with ready fresh legs we should all be worried <laughs> <laughs> I hope he comes back to Tour of Britain uh winning that Tour of Britain that was such a great uh it's great to have him on the race uh, this year and I uh, him and a lot a lot of other riders were using that as prep for the world he was so popular with the with the British crowds and the British fans that, that came out to and uh cheer him uh, on that one and uh, so yeah we'll see how it goes I think he's, he can be patient Vanderpool I think there's so much at the moment in terms of rushing you know everyone wants to see this guy uh, when is Tom Pidcock going to ride in the world tour and I think there's, you've got to be patient haven't you there's a lot of pressure now on young riders to, to step up too early and a lot of world tour teams now recruiting riders straight out of, uh, of the junior, junior ranks but they're still only in their early 20s aren't they yeah, they are, and there's a lot of opportunities out there. There's a lot of different types of racing. Vanderpool's uh, been the uh, first rider to show that combining all these disciplines is possible. After you see Vanderpool slamming this section one last time, riding it with perfection and ease as he comes into the finish line, Marty. Out he goes, Matthew Vanderpool, another top draw performance from the world champion from Coronet Circus, and uh, he, he will now uh, set another victory here this weekend and will he take another one in Namur tomorrow Van der Poel riding in zips up his skin suit always the true pro and he'll be able to sit up and enjoy this one Van der Poel takes the victory just uh, 30 seconds over an hour of racing 11 laps in total and we just saw Quentin Harriman's uh, come into sight there the Telenet Bowers uh, Lions Ryder quite a fight that he had with uh, Tom Pidcock, but he comes in and uh, takes uh, second uh, place here. High five in the 
crowd in as he does. So continuing a good season for uh, Quentin Kermans. Victories Essen and Beringen. Lots of podiums for that man going all the way back to Eklo. Another good day out for the Trinity Racing Man, the British champion, bringing that national champion's jersey home here in third place. Just uh, preserving a little bit of legs for tomorrow. Gives the high fives to the crowds. Peter Bosmans is the rider that we saw just coming into sight. But Pitcock's got plenty of of uh, room to just ride in across the line. So it's Pitcock in third. Vita Bosman will come home in fourth place behind him. Good day out uh, for this man. Good to see a super emergence, you would say, today by Vita Bosman. Yeah, that will be a, uh, that'll definitely be something that he's excited about and uh, gives him a good amount of momentum to head into the, uh, to the end of his season with those new sponsors um, in that new program. Definitely the kit and the bike looking very sharp as we see Jens Adams here coming along the uh, firm part of the the, uh, the lake there with uh, Zednik Stibar trying to get back up onto his wheel. Um, good to see CB out there. Stevie's had a good day. I know a lot of you out there, big fans of uh, this man. Has a look back over the shoulder, and Jens Adams has managed to get away from him today. The Pals uh, Sousen Bingo rider. This is going to be their best uh, performance today. Elise Bit has uh, chosen to sit out today in favor of tomorrow, the World Cup in uh, Namur. But uh, uh, Stevie got himself up there after a fairly decent gridding position. This will do him no harm at all as well in the races to come. But Jens Adams rides home here in fifth place. And then behind him will be Marcel Meissen, the German champion from Corinthian Circus. But it's Adams in fifth place, two minutes and 30 seconds down on your winner, Matthew Vanderpool. And uh, Stiebe comes uh, home. Great to see him uh, up there. Great to see him in the mix. Absolutely, very good to see him in the mix. He's had a uh, he's had a heck of a career racing cyclocross, been the world champion multiple times. has uh, has taken quite a few victories at just about every one of these crosses. Has been a uh, Svenny's called him his strongest competitor. So here we are with uh, Vanderpool. Of of eens het voorbij half weg koers is of wanneer jij het aanvoelt. Ik weet het niet. Neem ons eens even mee in jouw hoofd. Nee, het was ook vroeger dan ik eigenlijk wou, want het is enorm snel parcours en. Toch wel lastig om uh, heel de tijd uh, vol te rijmen. Het was omdat ik uh, hoorde dat de speaker zei dat er iemand in het zand bleef hapen achter mij. Heb ik echt rond gekeken en toen zei ik dat ik een mooi kloofje had en toen heb ik wel doorgezet. De speaker is de schuldige. <laughs> ja, eigenlijk wel. <laughs> maar het was sowieso wel uitstel van executie geweest voor de rest, denk ik. Ja, dat weet ik niet. Dat is uh, sowieso gewoon een heel lastig rondje. En, um, om hier zomaar iemand uit de wiel te rijden is gewoon heel moeilijk. En, Daarom dat ik ook beslist heb om iets vroeger dan, uh, dan ik hier gedacht had uh, het te proberen, omdat ik een gaatje kreeg. Maar toch heb je twee gedaan en toen we vooraf spraken met elkaar, zei ik op het einde tot straks voor het winnende interview. Hier zit je nu. Je weigerde daarop in te gaan. Ik dacht, ja, ik ga toch geen uitspraken doen. Maar waarom doe je dat niet? Want eigenlijk kan je toch bijna voorspellen? Ja, zo gemakkelijk is het allemaal niet. Je ziet... Als je je niveau haalt toch wel, Mathieu? Ja, dat lijkt soms zo, maar um, voor mij is het ook uh, een uur tegen de limiet rijden. En, um, het blijft heel lastig gewoon om, om een cross te winnen sowieso. En, Um, het is niet omdat je er uh, een paar wint dat uh, vanzelf gaat. Kijk eens, de nederigheid die typeert jou ook altijd natuurlijk. Je zei me ook vooraf, pff, het is een rustige week geweest, het is niks speciaals geweest. En ik stond er niet onmiddellijk bij stil, maar je bent wel sportman van het jaar geworden in Nederland. En je, jij zegt dat het een rustige week was, een normale week. Ja, ik heb um, ervoor, ervoor gekozen om de verplaatsing niet te maken naar daar. Dus, um, ook omdat ik uh, inderdaad een rustige week wou hebben. Maar ik heb ook al uh, gereageerd met het feit dat ik het wel uh, een hele eer vind om dat te worden. Zeker als je kijkt naar de, naar de andere uh, die, uh, die er uh, kans maakt op die titel, denk ik wel dat het uh, echt iets betekent. En ik geef niet zo heel veel om van die prijzen. Ik doe het liever in de koers, maar met, op die uh, prijs mag ik wel trots zijn, denk ik. Voor de mensen die het niet weten, je hebt Max Verstappen en Virgil van Dijk uh, achtergelaten. Dat zijn ook absolute kleppers. Nog één ding. De indruk van Paul Herreigers, klopt die? Dat uh, eentje die 20 seconden had, dat het vanaf dan op 90, 95 procent was? Ja, het was uh, vooral de kloof maken dat inderdaad lastig was. Daarna kwam ik wel uh, een beetje in mijn ritme, vond ik. En had ik uh, het parcours ook een beetje door, waar je uh, hard moest trappen en waar je het iets minder snel kon doen. Gefeliciteerd en succes morgen. We gaan naar Quinten Hermans. Warme kousjes.
There we have it, Matty van der Poel. We haven't got Magnus here today to uh, translate. My Dutch is uh, still not uh, not good enough uh, for that one. I'll I'll confirm that. But we saw the sprint there, and I was counting everyone in. And uh, Cameron Mason uh, from Trinity Racing, I looked like he was just sprinting with Voits there. Uh, might have got eleventh today. I'll confirm that. Don't quote me on that one. But uh, that would be that would be a really good performance from uh, from Cameron Mason. He's a uh, he seems Jeremy like he's really benefiting from uh, from having the uh, Tom from having that time spending working and practicing with with Tom Pidcock that's worth so much isn't it as well Absolutely. Yes. I think uh, anytime you're a rider that's riding with someone that's a little bit better than you, um, really able to grow and learn from them. It's always hard to be, you know, at the top end of the uh, sport, the pointy end, you know, you have to make a lot of decisions about what you're going to do and surround yourself with good people to help guide you. But when you're someone like Cam Mason, you're able to uh, pick up and, and soak up so much. So that's the beautiful thing about the, uh, the climb, as I would call it, you know, when you're out there as a young rider, just climbing up the totem pole to get to the top. That was probably my favorite time in the sport, just learning and taking it all in and trying to to be the best rider that I could be. What day? I hope you enjoy it. Let's have a look back now at the Elite Men's uh, Race highlights. What a race we had. And uh, Jeremy, quite quickly, it was, well, we, we kind of had a little bit of a roar when we saw Stevie uh, getting up there. But uh, Herman's Tom Pidcock did a great job here of just moving up very, very quickly and really took the race to everybody at this stage. It did, exactly. And so then Pitcock here, able to ride this section, caught uh, Vanderpool off guard, didn't see that coming. The crowd, you can hear, freaked out for this. It was so cool to be able to see Pitcock tear that section up, lay down an attack. Vanderpool had to pin that back together and had to dig pretty deep after that. Wasn't going to let that happen again. Unfortunately, Quentin Haramont's not able to ace that section. That gave Vanderpool just a small gap that he needed to lay down some power and open up a big one. And it, it, it showed you cannot hand Matthew van der Poel. He then took a leave out of Tom Pidcock's book and followed the lead of the British champion, managed to ride that section. Pidcock did the same behind, and for a while it looked like they were holding van der Poel. But in the end, it was uh, rewriting that story yet again as he rode away for victory. Hermans and Pitcock were locked in their own private battle behind for that second and third spots on the podium. The changes to the course, the sand section straight into the home straight. Matthew van der Poel um, starting um, a new winning streak. Takes that ahead of uh, Quentin Hermans of Telenet Bauer's Lions and then the British champion behind Tom Pidcock riding home for third spot today. Jeremy, it just shows at this level, doesn't it? The, the, the margin of error is absolutely minute, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You're riding against someone that's a perfectionist, uh, and that's Matthew Vanderpool. Uh, not a lot of errors out there, not a lot of uh, room to make mistakes when you're riding against someone that's so dominant, is so uh, so classy on the bike. So there's going to be uh, going to be an interesting couple of weeks of racing as we have coming up. See who is challenging him as we see the big riders start to kind of come off those training camps, really put the uh, the cherry on top of their form, and look forward to uh, this big this big two weeks of racing that we have coming up. Yeah, indeed, because we've got some really, I mean, we've got some good stuff. I mean, we think, as we said, we've got a couple of World Cups. Namur tomorrow, uh, Houston Zolder on, uh, on Boxing Day, as we call it in the UK. I don't know what everyone calls it around the world. This day after Christmas Day, that's the 26th. That's the very limited territory. So, uh, as we said, keep, keep giving us thumbs up because we're having uh, 10 plus thousand viewers on these. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, that helps as well. Make sure you subscribe to GCN Racing as well, and you'll be able to hit your bell icons. This is your top 10 today. Matthew Van Der Poel, Quentin Harrimans, Tom Pidcock, Vietje Bosmans, Jens Adap, Zdenek Stieber, Marcel Meissen, Vincent Bastians, Dieter Van Torenout, Matisse Voits, which means, yes, Cameron Mason would have been in 11th place uh, today. That was him sprinting out with uh, with Matisse for that uh, that top 10. Um, looking uh, at uh, ahead we've got some uh, really really historic races um some of some of my real favorites uh coming up in the, in the in the next week or so Degum in particular that night race in Degum that's always really that's a really really special one as well 
Yeah, it is. There's uh, there's some great races that are coming up in this period. You know, people have the time off from work. They're able to come off, uh, you know, come out to the races, spend time with their family, have some beers, have some fritz, and cheer on their favorite riders that they see on the TV week in and week out. So, yeah, these races, having done the Christmas period pretty much my entire career, it is a very special time, and it truly is, in my mind, like what makes the cyclocross season a thing. You know, there's races every weekend, but then there's this dedicated period of race after race this cyclocross stage race there's sandy races there's muddy races there's hilly races there's flat races there is something for everyone so you got to kind of pick and choose but um but it is a great way to get a lot of races in in a very short amount of time yeah gp spend nice on the first of january in Baal, and we can hear from one of the men of the day tom pitcock i suppose and i guess that second place he can reach that second place but eventually it uh, was a third place. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really want to come today to race for second place. Well, I mean, first place is difficult, but uh, I wanted to try and be there near the finish to try and fight well with Matthew. And, uh, but yeah, it was, I felt pretty good today, but it was, uh, yeah. yeah. You felt pretty good. Uh, first two, three laps, uh, especially on the technical zones. Yeah. You were attacking all the time. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was, was when in a group before. It's like no one's really working, so I wanted to try and you know get maybe two of us away, and so we could work. But uh, yeah, I, I guess it came a bit back to bite me in the in the end. Yeah, I can imagine, and also maybe that the uh, hard training this week because Kurt also told us that you uh, drove with a bike from uh, where you live in Belgium to Neyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, it was headwind all the way as well, so. Uh, it was a uh, it was a long day, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's all to build up towards the worlds and stuff, so it's all good. Okay, thank you very much. Best of luck tomorrow in Naman. Tom Pidcock, good to hear from him. Naman, Namu, of course, giving him the the French and Flemish uh, names uh, for tomorrow's race. That would have been a big block, wouldn't it, from uh, from from where he, from where he is in Belgium down to <laughs> to Narman for uh, for probably what was a was a course recce as well to to just check that one out again. That it shows the the endurance work that you've got to do as a pro rider if you again you want to keep form through the cross season, but also if you're mindful as as riders are now as they go into the into the cross season. And it's always great to get that little insight of of what they're uh, of what they're doing during the week. Yeah, sounds like that was a that was a big ride. Uh, you know, Vanderpool famously rode home from Coxide of the year it was canceled due to wind and storms. Uh, so it's not something, but but that is something that the Belgian press will love to pick up on. That I couldn't tell if he did that earlier in the week or if he actually did that today. Um, I, that would be an early day for him if he did it today. But uh, but definitely we'll be looking for that and understanding what happened there a little bit later, so we can talk about that during the week and all these races that are coming up. Will indeed. Now, if you don't want to know what happened, we're going to have a look back at the uh, at the uh, the whole day uh, very very soon. Um, we'll come back to that. I'm being uh, I'm being told in my ears. I always love throwing into stuff. That's the beauty of uh, of live TV. Um, but we will have a we'll have a highlights of uh, the entire day today. Uh, keep uh, as well. Stay with us. Uh, we'll try and uh, stay with uh, for our podium presentations as well just to be able to uh, show you uh, those uh, Jeremy though today looking again down through that top 10 for someone like uh, Veach Bossman's new sponsors new team that's going to be that's going to be a, a really big uh, day for him hasn't it as you said he, he had some health problems over the last uh, few years and it's it's good to see that that talent that we always uh, knew was there just emerging again and getting close to the podium yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's a gonna definitely for him gonna leave here and think that there's an opportunity. Um, you know, there's there probably not a missed one, just an opportunity in the future to be able to do something again. I think it's been a while since he's been in the podium. Perhaps he'll look at some of the Swiss races, maybe the EKZ series as something that he could pick up uh, next year. Um, some of these other races that are going on when the big races are going on, Luxembourg take a win, just like we saw from Sonic. We know how valuable that is for a rider to be able to put their hands up to be able to kind of take a look at not necessarily riding against Vanderpool, who's the best in the world at the moment, but um, but take it against some other riders and then have success would be, uh, yeah, it'd be really, really good for him to be able to take a win. So with some good form coming into this Christmas period, yeah, I think it's possible that he takes a win at a smaller race, no problem. 
Tom Pidcock having a chat with Quentin Aramans behind us. All the fads get their uh, fruits, mayonnaise, and beer. Um, the uh, the after party will uh, will start here in uh, St Nicholas. Uh, there's Kim van der Steener down in the park. So post uh, post race uh, play in the park with their kids. Awesome to see the riders. Uh, yeah, definitely just hanging out, watching the other races, being there to uh, to soak it all in as we see the the uh, fans getting ready to watch these podium presentations today. It is great. And uh, if you want to catch up with what Tom Pidcock's up to, Cameron Mason's YouTube channel as well. They do some fun stuff on there as well. And they also watch GCN Racing. Um, they watch the women's race on GCN Racing live before they go and race. Third spot for Trinity Racing. Great to see the British national champions uh, jersey on uh, the podium today. That Red Bull baseball cap, big thing for uh, Tom Pidcock. We were there for his team presentation. And I was there when uh, Danny McCaskill presented him with that famous Red Bull helmet that's uh, so uh, highly sought over of, uh, be between different sports. Quentin Hermans from Telenet Barwas Lions, your second spot on the podium uh, today. It's a good day out for Quentin Hermans. He's been so consistent this season. He really has, yeah, and you can hear some of his fans that we heard all about in the podcast that I did with him. Uh, his, his, his fans apparently are some of the rowdy ones that like to uh, pass beers and uh, find their way to the, uh, to the beer garden often. So, yeah, you can hear them out there yelling and he's got a great following. But here's the champ, Matthew uh, Medical, thrown down, giving a, uh, giving a good hand to everybody in the class up there on the podium right now. Matty van der Poel on the top step of the podium yet again. Um, Quentin Herman, solid second place. So it's pretty similar to the driving cross last week and gets another keg, um, the, uh, the, the big keg of beer. There is your podium, your one, two, three, Van der Poel from Hermans and Pidcock. We uh, see that order switch at all over the course of the festive season and uh, the races to come over the uh, the upcoming week or so. As you said, tomorrow, Namur, then we go to Houston, Zolder, limited territories on that. DVB trophy in Leuenhout on the 27th. We're hoping that uh, Wout Van Aert gets the clearance from the doctor on that one. 29th, it's Degum and uh, the night race in that one. So uh, 16.50 UK time, 15.50 in Europe. And then we've got Bredena on the 30th of December and uh, the DVB trophy, the GP Sven Nice from Baal on uh, New Year's Day. And yes, I be, will be with for all of those. And uh, we are... Uh, ready to go on that one it's been a great day's racing if you don't want to know what happened in the women's race and you want to go back and watch the whole highlights then you might want to look away now because we will do the full highlights of the day including the women's race and what a day we have had let's have a look at that now Match Gamalda led out on that opening lap. Great start from the group Hens Mass rider. Kat uh, Blanca Katavas in the second. Sana Kant led away. It was Annie van Alphen that was locked in the battle. The champion of Hungary dropped back. It then became a race between Annie van Alphen and Sana Kant. Van Alphen went down. That handed Sana Kant the lead, but the race was not over by any means it wasn't it was warm temperatures you see Zonicon having to uh, having to get a little bit more airflow it was very hot out there almost 50 degrees Fahrenheit almost 10 degrees Celsius as she comes through big gap there and um, any Van Alphen chasing hard though never giving up and it was this moment here Zonicon coming in that high inside line not able to execute it Van Alphen realizing that she wasn't gonna be able to ride it either besides she's gonna get off and troop through but then passes the world champ in a moment where she's just not got it all together and um, Zonicon trying to open up the season to take that first victory but Van Alphen using that technique that she's been honing over the last couple of years to be able to ride these barriers gets in front of the world champion for the straightaway world champion surges to the front and Sana Kant takes out her first victory of the season puts her name up on the board and is elated to be able to take the victory.
Sonicant takes that one from Ali Van Alphen. A good day again for the 20-year-old Dutch rider taking second spot on the podium. There's your top 10 here in St. Nicholas. Sonicant from Anik Van Alphen. Uh, Blanca Katavas with Don Schott, Vahestra and Sels Royakas, Van der Steena, Van der Bacon all in the top 10. In the elite men's Injury. race, Quentin Hermans led away with Matthew Van der Poel, Marcel Meissen, Zdenek Stieber, Tom Pitcock and Vinny Bastians all well to the front. It came down to a very select leading group, but it was Tom Pidcock of Trinity Racing that looked to try and thin out the group, dropped the big bomb on this section. The only man that we've seen be able to ride this section for many years. Van der Poel reacted. He was not letting the British champion go. Yeah, and then it was Van der Poel that decided, I've had enough of that, but unfortunately, Quinton Hermans has a problem at that exact moment. Opens up a gap, Vanderpool notices, decides he's going to put some pressure on the pedals. Opens up a big gap, and then it's up to Hermans to try to close it down. Unfortunately, not able to, but Pitcock again, putting on a big show, riding this section again. I think he wrote it three or even four times. Comes through, takes time back, but not able to close the gap for Vanderpool because Vanderpool had already ridden those sections as well and one upped him by putting down an attack in the sand as well as they come into this section which was the back side of the course in the forest. Seeing a nice shot here at Vanderpool's rear wheel as he rides that rut all the way to the finish line. Matthew Vanderpool is his second win uh, since uh, the drive across last week. After that winning streak was brought to an end, Quentin Hermans uh, crossed the line in second place for Telenet Bauer's Lions. And uh, Tom Pidcock rounded out the podium in third. Bossman's Adam Stiebar, Meissen, Bastian's Van Turen out of Voigt was your top 10 on what has been a great day's racing here in St. Nicholas on GCN Racing. What a day. We had two phenomenal days, uh, uh, two, two phenomenal races today, didn't we? Um, I'm, I'm really happy with, uh, with the racing today. Yeah, the women's race was so awesome to be able to call and to see. It was such a good battle between Enik Van Alphen and Sonic in the end. Also, um, just very, very, very good things to come. I'm excited for all of the, uh, the young riders that are coming up on the women's side as well as the men's side. There's a lot of new names, but, um, but it was really, really fun to be able to call that, that women's race today. I truly enjoyed that. So I hope you enjoyed today's action. Remember, please subscribe to GCN Racing. Give us a big thumbs up as well. That all helps develop and grow our cyclocross coverage here on the channel. If you're racing this weekend, good luck. If you're out there uh, organizing and helping, good job as well. We couldn't have a sport without you all. Thanks for all your chat. It's been great to uh, keep an eye on that. From Jeremy Powers and myself, Mike McDonald, join us again soon. Bye for now.